Today's game on KFJB TV is brought to you by Assured Partners, Boy Scouts of America, Edward Jones, Agent Zach Wall, Ember's Retirement Community, Honest Heating and Cooling, Jensen Ford, Legends American Grill, Lennox Employees Credit Union, Marshalltown Area Chamber, Marshalltown Community College, McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, Pence Appliance and TV, Wayward Social, Zeno's, Wandering Creek, Wells Fargo Advisors, Laurel Diesel Services, Calvin Rocket, your Marshalltown High V, Central State Bank. <laughs> Saturday afternoon, doubleheader from Weir McGraw Courts at Waterloo East High School. Brandon Lewis with you this afternoon as the Bobcats travel on the road in an Alliance, Iowa Alliance Conference action here tonight. Welcome into our broadcast as this afternoon we look at a good matchup between two very good girls and boys basketball teams. Marshalltown Bobcats victorious last night on their home floor for girls basketball as they got a win. Uh, of course, uh, last night at home, or excuse me, on Tuesday night, uh, they got a win 50-21. to 21. Boys were in action last night. They got themselves a win against Waterloo West. So look to continue the momentum that has been made this week for the Bobcat girls and boys teams. Coming up, we will get you a preview of this matchup between Waterloo East and the Marshalltown Bobcats as girls and boys action to come here this afternoon in the Iowa Alliance Conference. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KF. JB TV. You're an empty nester closing in on that retirement property. Chances are your plans didn't include mom moving in, but what happens and you do the right thing? Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement means caring for yourself and a loved one, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. As you walk inside, you know right away the place for fun is Wayward Social. There's always plenty of bowling action, so plan for your next outing to include bowling at Wayward Social. Also, meet your friends for lunch, dinner, or your favorite beverages. You will also absolutely love their daily lunch specials, Monday through Friday, including endless pizza by the slice. You choose the toppings. Wayward Social is now open at 11.30 a.m., seven days a week. Wayward Social on South 6th Street in Marshalltown. Bobcats and Trojans this afternoon on KFJB TV. Time to take a look around the conference. What's going on? Not a whole lot of conference action today, but there is plenty of girls and boys basketball to be had as Millard West High School out of uh, Nebraska. They're playing that game at uh, Creighton University today. Johnston, number one in girls uh, rankings. They are headed over there to the western portion of the state to take on Millard West in Omaha. Ankeny Centennial is at Ballard today. Also Dubuque, Hempstead, and Prairie. Cedar Falls takes on Iowa City West. That game is underway. And Wallert Catholic takes on Davenport West. So we'll keep you up to date as we do get some of those scores here this afternoon. But a good conference matchup for you. We'll preview it next. Trojans, Bobcats this afternoon right here on KFJB-TV. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same, and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problem. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. 
You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn's Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today, our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Pence Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. Bobcat ladies get anxious, waiting for JV to get over as Kinsley Bowie and uh, the crew ready to get going. Bobcats 5 and 6, 2 and 3 in the Iowa Lions Conference North. Meanwhile, for the Waterloo East Trojans, they are 2 and 2 in conference action. They are 3 and 6 overall heading into this matchup here this afternoon behind, coach, uh, behind head coach Will Muhammad. For the Waterloo East Trojans, as we take a look at them and kind of our keys to victory today for both squads, the Trojans, uh, first-year headman Will Muhammad, as uh, he takes on Bobcats this afternoon. Uh, he knows Trojans have been successful against the Bobcats overall since 2014. They are 8-2. and two. A lot of players back from last year's squad, including uh, leading scorer Jalea Stanford, and uh, Jale Stanford averaging 12 points per game, 7.8 rebounds per game, 4.6 assists. She's a 5'6 senior. And uh, Jayla Stanford, a uh, very good player, a guard. Me and Norman, she'll also get the start here today. She's averaging four points per game, four rebounds per game. And uh, Grayson Downing, nine points per game, 3.4 rebounds per game. This is a team that does uh, turn it over about 15 per game, but that's definitely less than what the Bobcats do. They like to rebound as well, 29 rebounds per game heading into this one. As Waterloo East Trojans, 48.6 points per game, averaging giving up 55 points per game, so kind of a key to keep an eye on that. They've had a tough road uh, uh, to hoe here lately because uh, their schedule pretty tough, including Cedar Falls, a loss back on January 2nd against Cedar Falls, 85-47. to They've had some postponements recently, so they're kind of in a familiar situation as the Bobcat boys and girls have been in with those cancellations of those games. So their last game uh, back on January 2nd, so I'm sure they are just as eager to get back in action, just like Brian Murphy and the Marshalltown Bobcat ladies. Biggest one for the ladies on the road here today. They have got to hold on to that basketball, giving up uh, averaging 29 turnovers per game. Keep those turnovers low and uh, keep those steal numbers high as they average 12 steals per game. That's one thing this team does well, including rebounding. Coming into this game, definitely averaging more rebounds per game at 34 compared to Waterloo East. So about five more rebounds per game. And they'll do that with Frankie Long as uh, Frankie averaging 10.4 rebounds per game coming into this one. Bobcat ladies getting anxious, trying to get things going here today on the road at Waterloo East as uh, JV is just about ready to wrap up. We've got some fouls uh, late here as the Bobcat JV boys team is currently down by five points in that game. Coming up in uh, our post-game show here later, we will break down stats and we'll also talk to head coach Brian Murphy in between uh, halftime of the boys' game, and uh, we'll do that. We'll also get you regional scoreboard updates throughout the afternoon, all brought to you by Central State Bank. And, of course, you can discover, discover what Central State Bank can do for you, locations in Ames State Center and in West Des Moines. We've got our Cat Connection coming up at halftime of the girls' game as uh, we've got, uh, I believe it's Frankie Long this afternoon. We'll chat with her on our Cat Connection here today as... JV just about ready to wrap up. Uh, Five-point game is uh, take a look at them on the floor. Three to try to get in there and tie things up. Will Swartz can't haul in the rebound, and East will just effectively end the game right there as a late foul is called with .3 seconds left to go in this one as uh, JV will have a, uh, a loss on the road. I was talking with uh, Tim Moses. He is the AD for Waterloo East and uh, very accommodating. One of the best ADs in the Iowa Alliance Conference. There's a whole host of really good ADs in the Iowa Alliance, and we appreciate the hospitality wherever we go, whether it's uh, Mason City, Fort Dodge. Hoover is, is always a, a good host as well. And um, 
Anyways, talking to him, they recently, the boys played at Roosevelt's, uh, but that game was in Wells Fargo Arena and a great, uh, great place to uh, have a game. And he was telling me he had a connection with the Iowa Wolves and set that up. So I said, we need to get an Iowa Alliance Conference uh, tournament or a preseason tournament or something there and uh, showcase all the teams at uh, Wells Fargo Arena. So he was he was supportive. We'll see if we can, if we can get that kind of. Uh, thing going uh, it'd be definitely a, a cool experience for the kids so 63 to 58 a final in the jv game as that will come to an end as the waterloo east trojans take down the marshalltown bobcats as the girls will head out on the floor to get warmed up we've got plenty coming up including our pregame chat with head coach brian murphy also we'll get today's starting lineup and the starting five for both the trojans and the Bobcats. We'll take a quick timeout. You're watching Bobcat Basketball right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB TV. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress Downtown Marshalltown is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. Picture yourself at Marshalltown Community College. Become a Tiger for life. Visit mcc.iavalley.edu. Locations in both Marshalltown and Grinnell. The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown. Toledo and West Des Moines. Scouts in Marshalltown go on fun adventures. Scouts learn about the outdoors. Scouts learn character building. Scouts learn citizenship. Scouts learn life skills. Scouts learn to be leaders. Scouts go to fun summer camps and scouts get a head start in life. Marshalltown has produced over 200 Eagle Scouts in our over 70 year history and have provided over 1 million hours of service to our community. To learn more about joining scouting in Marshalltown, go to iascouts.org. Adventure on! Welcome back into the Countdown to Tip-Off. It is our pregame chat with head coach Brian Murphy. All brought to you by Exterior Plus Home Remodeling. Coach, your team played on Tuesday and got the win at home, the clean sweep of the Scarlets on the season 2-0 against them. How's practice been since that time? Uh, it's been good. It's definitely uh, time for another game. So uh, we'll string together three of them in a row and uh, see what it looks like. Yeah, and that's been the inconsistencies. How do you kind of help manage through that for your athletes? Uh, the biggest thing for us has been kind of focus on us. I mean, we know the things that uh, we need to work on as a team. So, I mean, this week it's been all about how many different ways can we practice against the press, you know, going five on seven, trying to mix it up, trying to give ourselves different looks just so we get in a feel for once we get out on the floor, recognize where the ball needs to go. You know, that's been one thing that we've talked about, too, is your team getting a feel for all different aspects, defensively and then offensively. I really thought, though, after the break, uh, you know, against Des Moines East and even a little bit against Ames, your team much better in not only breaking the press, but once you break that press, getting it over, setting it up uh, offensively, getting that going. It seems just like the flow is, is improving as the season goes along. What's your assessment on that aspect? Yeah, one of the things we're, we're seeing uh, both in practice and in games is we're getting a lot better with our eyes. We're recognizing where the next ball needs to go and starting to anticipate a little bit better. You know, obviously a team like Waterloo East presents a challenge where their speed is a little bit faster than what we can simulate in practice. So we got to recognize that the windows are going to be smaller, even if the passes are the st uh, still the same uh, location that we want to get the ball to. 
You know, and you mentioned Waterloo East. They are 8-2 and two against Marshalltown since 2014. They're always tough. They're always scrappy. It is always an interesting style of play, although they are a little bit smaller this year than some other years in the past that you've played them. I guess, what is their biggest uh, challenge that you'll face today? Uh, biggest thing for us is going to be containing their speed. Uh, number one, transition. So we cannot turn the ball over today because once they're out, they're hard to stop. Um, so that's going to be against the press. You know, any missed back basket, we got to get back. Um, but then ultimately, once we hold them in half court, we've got to make sure we're uh, stopping their drives without needing help because they're really good about drive and kick and then drive again once we're off balance. We've got to make sure that we are sound on the initial closeout, not needing that extra help, and then make sure we secure the ball and don't give them second chance points. You know, already talked about you know inconsistencies in the schedule and all that kind of stuff. Last year, this game here, right here at uh, Waterloo East High School, one of the best halves, one of the worst halves of basketball we saw last year. How do you get consistency in both halves of basketball today from your team? Uh, one of the things we've got to recognize is, you know, we, it's almost like we need to go through warm-ups again in the third quarter. We've had that happen a couple times this season where we have a really solid first half and come out in the third and we just, we're just we a little bit flat. We're not quite focused. Um, so that's going to be the big thing is making sure that what works, we understand that, you know, their team's going to plan for that. They're going to adjust. And we've got to come out the same level of intensity and not wait for them to make that first hit and be the ones that initiate that first punch. I don't know if you like it, but but I have to say I like a little Saturday afternoon basketball. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little weird, you know, the routines thrown off, you know, we came early, get shoot around in and you can see everybody kind of waking up a little bit, but, uh, you know, I, honestly at this point I'll set, I'll settle for a game period. Um, no matter what day of the week it is, you know, we, we just need a game. And, uh, like I said, we string together a few now, so it's nice to, uh, finally get in the floor and, uh, do some actual game type stuff. Best of luck tonight. Thank you. All right, that is Brian Murphy, our pregame chat. We'll check out starting lineups when we come back to Waterloo East High School and the countdown to tip-off right here on KFJB-TV. My name's Lake Schultz. I'm the co-owner of Exterior Plus Home Remodeling. At Exterior Plus, we truly strive to build relationships one customer at a time. And that's why we're the Midwest's number one choice in full home remodeling. Located in Marshalltown, Iowa, as well as Lincoln, Nebraska, we pride ourselves in providing quality service on time, every time. Give us a call for a free inspection and estimate at 844-261-6111. That's 844-261-6111. Thanks. Talk to you soon. With over 10,000 cars at our disposal, Jensen Ford... Hold on. That's not really how we do things at Jensen Ford. How about... It's never been a better time to buy a brand new... Um, yeah, we don't really do that either. When you're ready to buy a car, we'll be ready to help. Try this. We'll get you in and out faster than a speeding... We don't do that either. At Jensen Ford, we'll take as much time as you need to find the right vehicle. We're not just moving cars, but we're building relationships. Oh, maybe more of a... This is where your family buys their vehicles. There you go. More like that. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. Quality furniture for every room in your home. Pence Appliance and TV. For sales and service of everything appliance, come see the Pence team. Wayward Social. The place for bowling, games, food, and more. Wells Fargo Advisors. Marshalltown. Sports Plus. Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, sportsplustherapy.com. We are counting you down to tip off between the Trojans and the Bobcats from Waterloo East High School. Anna Lewis with you, Zach Tomish, our producer on site, as also Joe Cornwell and Keith Stewart on camera on our KFJB TV only broadcast this afternoon. Let's get you to today's starting lineup. So all brought to you by Sandvik Enterprises in Marshalltown. Let them deliver for you while we deliver you the starting lineup. First up for head coach Will Corey Muhammad as the starting five looks like this. It'll be Grayson Downing, number two, a 5'7 sophomore guard averaging 9.4 points per game, 3.4 rebounds per game. And she averages a steal and a half per game as well. Number two, Grayson Downing. Number three, Maya Norman. 3.9 points per game, 3.9 rebounds per game. A 5'8 senior forward. And she shoots it at 43% from the floor, 69% from the free throw stripe. Number four, Jayla Stanford, 12.1 points per game, 7.8 rebounds per game, 4.6 assists. We already highlighted her just a little bit, but she's a 5'6 senior guard, and she averages nearly seven steals a game on top of that. So not only does she pack a bunch offensively, but defensively, she is a uh, definitely a 
a player that's going to get under your skin probably at some point in the day. She is feisty and a very good guard that the Bobcats will have to battle against. Number 11, Sianna Cody, 10.3 points per game, 6.6 .6 rebounds per game. A 5'9 sophomore guard. She had a lot of playing time last year as well as Jemaya Caesar. She rounds out the lineup. Number 14 for the Trojans. 6.8 points per game, 4 rebounds per game. A 5'8 junior guard for the Waterloo Trojans, who are 3 and 6 or 3 and 8 coming into this game overall on the season as uh, Will Muhammad gets them ready to go here in Iowa Alliance Conference play this afternoon. All right, over on the other side of things for your Marshalltown Bobcat ladies behind head coach Brian Murphy. Five and six coming into this one, two and three in the Iowa Alliance Conference. As the Bobcats will start number 11, Kinsley Bowie. 6.8 points per game, three rebounds per game, and an assist and a half as well for the 5'7 sophomore guard. As Kinsley Bowie has started to come alive, she's shooting it at 24% from three-point territory. Number 20, Millie Heitman will start 3.3 points per game, 3.5 rebounds per game, and she does average a block a game as well. Six-foot sophomore really starting to come on for the Bobcats on the defensive end. Number 30, Sydney Capeyu had a really nice night against Des Moines East, made a couple big shots, a couple threes early on. A 5'7 sophomore averaging four points per game, 3.7 rebounds per game. She's shooting it at just 19% from three-point territory, but I imagine as she gets a little bit more comfortable in her role, playing a little more outside compared to inside last year, that shot will get even better down the line. It's hard to believe, but the Bobcat ladies have only played two games in the last month, which is real rarity and a hard thing to continue to continue to play, um, you know, in good form. Definitely with that much time off, hard to do that. Number 35, Ellie Hughes will start 3.9 points per game, uh, nearly six rebounds per game. A 5'8 junior forward for the Bombcats really does uh, a lot of nice things, even on the defensive end of things as well. 33% three-point shooter and 44% from the floor overall. And routing out the starting five for the Bobcats this afternoon, number 44, Frankie Long, 5.9 points per game, 10.4 rebounds per game. She's averaging 2.4 blocks per game for the Bobcats. 6-1 freshman forward, Frankie Long for the Marshalltown Bobcats. So that is your starting lineups. Again, all brought to you by Sandvik Enterprises in Marshalltown. We're counting you down to tip off. We'll take a quick timeout, and we, when we come back, we'll uh, break down our game even more as we inch our way towards tip off at Waterloo East High School on KFJB TV. Hayes drops back, looks to pass. He's got him oh. in the flat. That's Tate Ring makes the catch. He's up to midfield. He breaks away at the 40, 30, 20. And touchdown, Tate Ring, his second one of the night. Welcome back to Bobcat Live. We are inside Rosie's at Wayward Social. Louise High School as the Bobcats and Trojans warming up, getting ready for our action this afternoon in the Iowa Alliance Conference. We got the Deaconator on uh, on site with us this afternoon, and thanks to Tim Moses, AD, he lined you up with some hot dogs, some nerds. Uh, what are we What are we rolling with over there this afternoon? Uh, I don't know. A lot of snacks. A lot of snacks. Got to have snacks. That's for sure. How's the hot dogs here? All right. Pretty good. Pretty good for free, especially, right? All right, so you keep a track of rebounds this afternoon. Yeah. What are you looking for in this, this first matchup here in the girls' game? I want to see uh, Frankie have, like, 20. 20 points. How many? We got to get a double-double out of her this afternoon, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What about in the boys' game? I want to see Kyle make nine threes. Nine threes. That would be a season high. He's hit eight before. How many have you hit in a game? 
one. One three. Yeah. That's your that's your season high. Yeah. How many points in a game? Is it like eight or something? S six or eight. Six or eight. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for being along for the ride. You're welcome. All right, Zach. How are the 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 hot dogs? Are they uh, a five out of five? A four out of five. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I get it. I get it. You know. They're a little small. Little oh, a little small. Okay, a little small. All right. Could have bigger hot dogs here. The popcorn is really good though. I've had the popcorn here before. So. Anyway, uh, the JV game went a little bit longer than we were anticipating, and so we were running a little bit behind, but uh, we are uh, getting ready for our coverage here this afternoon as we will take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll bring you starting lineups live and the national anthem from Waterloo East High School down on Weir McGraw Court. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFJB TV. <laughs> Cats and Trojans get ready to do battle this afternoon. Let's get a quick scoreboard update this afternoon. All brought to you by Central State Bank. And Purdue took down Iowa in men's basketball, 84-70. to And Iowa State barely gets past TCU, 73-72, a final from there. Don't have any finals as far as high school girls basketball goes, but we'll keep you up to date as the afternoon goes along. One more quick timeout. We'll get you lineups and the national anthem when we come back on KFJB-TV. How can you help Marshalltown High School and enjoy a mouth-watering burger at the same time? By ordering the Bobcat Burger at Legends American Grill. Two quarter-pound patties with crisp bacon strips, sautéed onions and melted American cheddar, jack and Swiss cheeses on top of fresh shredded lettuce on a toasted bun. It's absolutely delicious. One dollar from every Bobcat Burger sold is donated by Legends to Marshalltown High School activities. So, enjoy a Bobcat Burger and help MHS. The Bobcat Burger, another exclusive from Legends American and grill in Marshalltown. Welcome in to Bobcat Live. We are inside Rosie's at Wayward Social. Saturday afternoon hopes on the road. Waterloo East and Marshalltown. Let's step aside for the national anthem.
Conference of Champions matchup this afternoon. Iowa Alliance, Waterloo, our hosts this afternoon as this is the first meeting of the season for the Bobcats and Trojans. They'll next play again on February 9th. Of course, these two teams were slated to play last week, but weather interfered with the regularly scheduled matchup. Bobcats in those blue to or, uh, red tops and bottoms, blue numbers outlined in white on the road this afternoon. Waterloo East, white tops and bottoms east, a written in black outlined in orange. A little bit of a lighter crowd, I guess you could say, than we typically see at Waterloo East, probably just due to a Saturday afternoon contest. Eight minutes on the clock. We are good to go this afternoon as the Bobcats look for a pivotal win on the road in conference play. Trojans win the opening tip, and we are underway. Man-to-man -man defense, and Heitman with a steal, and a good sign there. Heitman averaging just under a steal a game. And a three, open it up. We mentioned that. Starting to feel it from outside. Sydney could pay you a dart from the right wing. Three to nothing. And the answer right back. Wow, how about that? Jada Ladder, or excuse me, Aaliyah Weekly made that from the right wing. Now a tie-up possession arrow is with the Bobcats, so it'll stay on the left side of your TV screen as Bowie will inbound. Boy, Frankie Long, that's one thing is she's so tall, gets those inbound plays, but at times the defense knows how to attack the young freshman. Use that aggressiveness against her. And got that jump ball, but right here, Ellie Hughes, a little bit of physicality herself gets the ball back for the Bobcats. And now the Trojans steal it away, but it's out of bounds on the far sideline. Bowie will inbound as the Bobcats get it back. Good play right there by Hughes to get that steal. Now Capayu kicks out. Around the perimeter, Bowie will feed it into Long. Bobcats try to get inside the paint. Finally, they do to Hughes, rips it away and scores it for two. Cats lead. In transition, that one blocked as Heitman gets another block to add to her stat sheet. She averages a block a game, last touch. By the Trojans. Bobcats leading by two. Get the ball back. Bobcats almost turning it over. Now they will as Capayu. She said that one was tipped, but it will stay with Waterloo East. So the Trojans, they are two and four in conference play. Meanwhile, your Marshalltown Bombcat ladies two and three. Shout, but not go. Outlet goes to Bowie. Beat into Capay. Likes to play inside. Down to the right block, she works. Cut off by the defense. Tanya Moore is into the game. Mora. Passes to Capayu in the corner. She's nearly getting trapped, and now Mora has to back it out. Checks out the shot clock. Ten seconds. Feeds in Frankie Long. She had the player beat, but kind of took that dribble in and now passes out. Turnover, but it'll stay with the Bobcats. It's last touched by Jada Latiker. And the shot clock will run out. Bobcats lost track of it. So Jada Latiker hit that three, and that's the only bucket so far this afternoon. She's wide open again. Same spot, same result. Jada Latiker with two threes, and now East takes their first lead of the afternoon, 6-5. 
More over the timeline to Bowie. Bounce pass back door to Frankie Long. Extra pass, Capayu, her three is tipped. Rebound brought in by Maya Norman. And Latiker wide open, got to guard her. Three skims off the back of the iron. Now foul and a check, a hip check at that by Ellie Hughes. That happened at the free throw line. So that will be the first foul of the afternoon on the Bobcats. Georgia Jansen checks in for her first minutes of the game. Ellie Hughes, Millie Heitman check out. As Mora, as well as uh, just mentioned Jansen into the game, a three on the left wing is good. It's now 9-5. And now an over and back. Bobcats struggled there. Sydney Capayu pass over to Tanya Mora. And it is a turnover on the Bobcats, who are now feeling pressure. Sienna Cody hit that three, making it 9-5. So Bobcats really have to guard the perimeter here. They do a nice job in the paint, but the smaller guard team, they actually beat the Bobcats here. Aaliyah Weekly for two on the right block. Quick ball movement for the Bobcats. They answer, though, to Frankie Long. That's what they have to do more of this afternoon to stay in this one. 11-7 our score with nearly four minutes to go. And now a bump going down to the right side of the paint right there. Jayla Stanford. And the shot did not go, but she goes to the line for two free throws. So Jayla Stanford... A 47% free throw shooter on the season at the line for two. And the first one off the front of the iron, no good. First time we've seen Amara Johnson into the game for the Bobcats. Bowie checks out. In that place, Frankie Long is down court as the Bobcats break the press. So get it to Frankie, but that was a telegraph pass, and it was picked up by Waterloo East. Good play by Weekly to come away with that basketball, and now looks like Georgia Jansen's going to pick up a foul as she was riding her up the court. And actually, it's going to be on Tanya Mora. First one of the day for Mora, but third team foul already in this first quarter with 347 and counting. Floater in the paint, no go, high off the glass. That one really lost it out of control. Heitman up the far side of the court, out of Mara Johnson, top of the key. Drives down the right side of the paint, turnaround jumper, opens wide up, high off the glass, no good. Rebound brought in by East. Heitman almost with a pick right there, but couldn't get it. Cody drives, kicks. Long shot. It's a two. It is a two. Weekly drains it, though, from the far side corner. Amara Johnson tries to get into the three-point game, but can't do it. And now she's going to foul from behind. Not a good foul right there. She fouls Cody. And that's number four, so one more. And the Trojans are going to be shooting a plethora of free throws potentially in the first quarter already. And the Bobcats getting a little bit of foul trouble. So Johnson picks up her first of the afternoon. 13-7 that scores. The Bobcats trailing on the road in the opening quarter. A drive down to the right block and a foul. A step in. I believe that's going to be on Ellie Hughes. That'll be her second foul of the afternoon already. That's number five. So Bobcats not off to a good start this afternoon. Scored nice. They were. Capayu hit a three. Ellie Hughes, Frankie Long got a bucket, but Waterloo East really doing a nice job. Finding that open spot. Good ball movement early on here. First free throw is up and good for Caesar. And second free throw as well for Caesar is good. So both. Free throws made. Caesar coming into this one, a 40% free throw shooter. 
Back door to Ellie Hughes. It's tipped out of there. Well, just really not crisp passes this afternoon. Sloppy ball control for the Bobcat ladies. And luckily, they'll hold on to this possession. Payu inbounds to Heitman. Johnson right wing, look at a drive, gets into the paint, floater up, and oh, that one was halfway down, pops out, rebound brought in by Stanford. She'll bring it up court to the free throw line, bobbled by Cody. Cody turns around, jumper, long, it's no good. Skims off the left side of the iron, Amara Johnson with a rebound, and boy, Waterloo East trying to mix it up there with Weekly, and it will be Bobcat basketball. I think we're going to see a foul on Weekly, and it will be. Trying to force a jump ball, but that was uh, a little bit of an assault from behind uh, in that process. <laughs> Coach Muhammad it was trying to trying to beg and plead for a jump ball, but it was a little, a little too much contact there. Heitman passes directly to the Trojans. Turnover, and they'll get beep. Good ball movement. Back door, Caesar puts in her first jumper of the afternoon for two. She has four in the game. Bobcats pick up their dribble, get it back to the top of the key to Johnson from Sidney Capayu. It looked like Georgia Jansen had something going there, but she lost her dribble, and that tied things up. We did get a tie-up down low. Possession arrow is with the Bobcats, but we do have a foul before that happened, and Sianna Cody will pick up the foul. That is her first of the afternoon. Mara Johnson, Georgia Jansen, check out for the Bobcats. Bowie is back in. Catch and shoot off the inbound. Long doesn't draw iron, but Long gets the rebound. Bounce pass to Hughes. Two shots coming her way. Ellie Hughes, a 44% free throw shooter on the season. First one off the back of the iron, hits twice. And off the right side, not able to knock down that one. Free throw is going to be very pivotal this afternoon for the Bobcat ladies. And that one will take a high bounce off the iron and drops in 17-8. Cats have to claw back into this one after leading initially. Almost a travel down to the right block. A little out of control by Stanford. Misses the shot. And now the Bobcats just throw it away. Getting a little too ahead of themselves in this process, especially in the backcourt. A little bit of pressure by Waterloo East this afternoon has really rivaled the Bobcat ladies, which they handled pretty well in their past couple of games against Ames and Des Moines East. Now three right wing, no go there. Caesar not able to get that three from the right wing. Bobcats get the rebound. Outlet, Capayu brought it up court. Now they work it back to Capayu in the paint, turnaround jumper, good move, couldn't get it. Ellie Hughes flies in, rebound, count the bucket. She's got one coming. Stanford with the foul, and she picks up her first of the afternoon. Now four fouls on Waterloo East just like that. And Hughes cannot make it a three-point play. She is one of three this afternoon at the, at the line. Three in transition, no go from the left wing, but the rebound by Caesar. And the putback is good for two. And now the Bobcats try to pass it up to Frankie Long. It's a turnover on the Bobcats. Those are mounting this afternoon. Bobcats out to clean that up. Down by nine. Air ball three. Rebound offensively, though. Turnaround jumper no good. Heitman gets the basketball. The Bobcats... And I'll have it poked away as Cody pokes it away from Heitman out of bounds on the baseline. It'll stay with the Bobcats with 14 seconds to go in the first quarter. 
Payu looks around, no numbers. And she'll have to get rid of the basketball to Bowie. Five seconds. Pass low off the feet of Long goes out of bounds. Back to the Trojans. 1.7 seconds to go. Picked, Heitman, long shot. Oh, off the backboard, can't get that one to fall. As it was just past half court, we saw one of those last night at home as Waterloo West drained one in a loss to your Marshalltown Bobcat boys basketball team. 19 to 10 at the end of the first, right here on KFJB TV. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to Marshalltown. Hey, Bobcat fans, it's Sydney DePeo, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB-TV. Ellie Hughes off to a good start this afternoon. Four points and, uh, or five points and four rebounds already this afternoon. So she'll have to continue to do that. She's gone to the line a couple times this afternoon, drawing fouls in the paint. But the Bobcats do find themselves down by nine with the basketball to start the second. Sydney Capayu with the inbound. Hands it off to the guard and Bowie who runs the point. Looking inside for Long. Beats the defense. There's a foul from behind. Stepping in was Cody. And she fouls Frankie Long. And she was on the right block. Long initially kind of lost that one, but was in the process of gathering it back when she was fouled. So Cody with a Couple to her name here this afternoon. That's actually number three. First team foul in the second quarter. Bowie inbounds. Up high to the free throw line to Heitman. You can definitely see Bowie's got a grasp of the offense and what they need to do. It's just sometimes situations not lining up. Sydney Capay with a turnaround jumper. Couldn't get it to fall, but Frankie Long with a tough rebound. And a push is going to be called on the Bobcats in that process. Frankie Long pushed on the rebound. Frankie will pick up her first of the afternoon. Down by nine. Almost a travel right there from the left wing, but she did put it down and a foul on her way to the rack. Caesar will draw a foul. She started on the left wing there and drove into the paint. Foul comes in on Frankie Long, and just like that, picking up two fouls quickly. Not even 45 seconds played here in the second quarter, picking up two fouls. Probably going to check out pretty soon as we see Ellie Hughes get off the bench. Cody gets a little hometown favor right there on the bounce, and the free throw is good. Cody with now four points in the game. She had a three earlier. And this free throw is off the right side of the iron. Kicks out left. Capayu with the rebound. Now travel as Bowie just kind of lost the basketball a little bit. And hampered her dribble. Saw that pressure stepping in on her. Probably didn't help matters. And now the defense falls asleep for a three on the right wing. It's no good, luckily. Hughes with another rebound. That's her fifth of the afternoon. Ooh, he dribbles into the corner off of her foot and turnover Bobcats. Well, Bobcats are going to get a run out of this gym this afternoon if they cannot uh, contain the turnovers. Bowie with... Uh, Poor body language is, I know, probably beating herself up over those turnovers, but you got to move over, uh, move on, because luckily East throws it right back out of bounds and a turnover. Tanya Mora checks in for Kinsley Bowie, who will check out. Visibly frustrated with a lack of production offensively for the Bobcat ladies. We'll see if 
Mora off the bench can provide a little bit of a spark here for the Cats. Picks up her dribble and immediately turns it over. Bad things happen when you pick up that dribble. Just like that, coast to coast Stanford for two. Heitman will now run the point. Oh boy. Dribble into the corner and picking it up. Bad situation, Bobcats able to get it out of there. Capeu, three guarding her on the right block. Trojans clogging up the paint. Jansen, three off the mark. Rebound by Stanford. And now Trojans throw it out of bounds. There is zero flow to this game this afternoon. Turnover after turnover between these two teams. A timeout on the floor. Cats down by 12. The equity in your home is power. Power to remodel your home. Take a memorable vacation at a deck or patio. Lennox Employees Credit Union can help you unleash the financial power you possess with a home equity loan. Consolidate debt, fund a student loan, or pay for a wedding. The loan process is easy. See Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA, Equal Housing Lender. Online at LennoxECU.com. Hey, Bobcat Nation. I'm Millie Heitman. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJV TV. 22 to 10 is the score as the Bobcats have not scored in the second quarter so far. As a 3-0 start for the Trojans in this quarter as the Bobcats have really just struggled offensively this afternoon. Picking up the dribble in bad spots and turning it over. And now a bad pass, not even a passing lane there as Hughes just throws it off the foot of a Trojan out of bounds. Last touch by Heitman was the intended target as uh, went off of her, but yeah, just feeling rushed, it seems like. And nobody steps in on Stanford as she drives in again, back-to-back -back possessions where she drives into the paint. Nobody picks her up. There's a travel right there by Heitman, another turnover. You can't look at the scoreboard down by 14 in this situation. You've just got to make every possession count, and unfortunately, Bobcat Lady is not doing that right now. Five and a half minutes to go before halftime. Another drive in, another shot. Hughes blocked it out of bounds on the Bobcats. We talked about Stanford. She just does a lot of things really well. 12 points per game. Nearly five assists per game. A feed in to Latiker, and it's an easy two off the glass. Latiker, eight points here in the first half. And things getting out of control this afternoon. Water Louise putting that pressure. Mora, she'll settle things down though. Left wing three by Tanya Mora, her first bucket of the afternoon. She only averages 1.3 points per game, so Tripling that up here this afternoon with that made bucket, but a much needed one to stop the bleeding. Three to answer. That one, I don't even know if it's skimmed the iron. Out of bounds, Bobcat basketball. Mira Johnson will check in. Also into the game. Aubrey Tejada, senior. She runs the point. Over to Tanya Mora. Going small here. Three guards in there. Along with Capeu, Tejada, in air ball on the three. Frankie Long with a couple fouls. And now Lily Hughes is going to pick up a foul. A drive, trying to shut it down, but Latiker draws a foul. And that's number three on Ellie Hughes. And she will get ready to go ride the pine probably for a little while. Latiker at the line for two. The first one is off the back of the iron and hits off the front, no good. Frankie Long in for Ellie Hughes. Hughes with a nice attempt, but got a little bit too much of that right arm and a little body as well. Latiker, second free throw to come here. She is a 50% free throw shooter on the season. And that one will drop in for Latiker.
Picking up the dribble right across midcourt. Bobcats do get it down to the right block, though. Capay, who's been pressured a lot with either two or three ladies guarding her when she drives into the paint. As she drives in here, a reach in on the arm. Looks like Moon from behind. And no, it's the lady guarding her uh, face up. Latiker picks up the foul, her first of the afternoon. Sydney Capayu will be the inbounder. A couple of more substitutions. Tata checks out Bowie's back into the matchup. Winner of this game will pick up their third Iowa Lions Conference victory. And Bobcat ladies off to a slow start. Amara Johnson misses a shot. Long gets the rebound, though. Second life offensively. Bowie picks up the dribble, gets frustrated, and tosses it away. Way too high on that pass. As we are under four minutes before halftime, Cats down by 14. Runner in the paint is no good. Cody misses it, but the Trojans get an offensive rebound. Drive in, and a blocking foul is going to be called as Stanford puts up a shot from a few feet out in front of the hoop. Foul will come in on Kinsley Bowie. Stanford heads the line as that's number two on Bowie. Stanford now with five points. This is her second trip to the line tonight. And the second free throw is no good, so she splits those. 28-13. Heitman goes coast to coast, but the layup is way too strong. Long gets the rebound. And Weekly getting a little physical with Long on that rebound. Possession arrow is with the Trojans on the jump ball. Stanford over midcourt, passes to the left wing over to Caesar. Back to the top, threes off the left side of the iron, no good. As Weekly tried that three, but the Bobcats with the rebound from Heitman and then lose it out of bounds. Turnover, Bobcats. Turnaround jumper inside is good for Jemiah Caesar. Eight points for Caesar. Mora drives into the paint, turnaround jumper, high off the glass, no good. Long rebound, but has it ripped away by Stanford. She'll take it all the way. Steps in between a couple of Bobcats and makes that one look easy. Good transition points and nearly a 20-point lead. A miss inside. Long gets away with an initial push, but then pushes even harder on Caesar, who misses the shot, but she's headed the line for two free throws. I don't know if it's rust or just being outworked here this afternoon, but the Bobcats, very undisciplined. A lot of turnovers and a lot of fouls mounting up this afternoon as well. They've had over five fouls in the first and second quarter. First free throw by Caesar is missed. She is two for three at the free throw stripe. Heitman rebound. So Caesar misses both, but the Bobcats turn it right back over. She'll go inside the paint, and this time Caesar connects. 
That one for two. It's a 21-point lead with two minutes before the break. And the Bobcats dribble it out of bounds. When it rains, it pours. Contagious this afternoon. And you can see visibly a lot of Bobcat ladies frustrated. Rightly so, but there is a good play by Stanford. Just Juke Tamara Johnson out of her Nikes. And Stanford is just doing whatever she wants to do this afternoon against the Bobcats. Who have been rattled on offense, to say the least. Capay who gets a feed out on the left wing. Rebound, Amara Johnson inside. Gets that one to fall for two. Johnson, her first bucket of the afternoon. She averages nearly five points per game. That one is on the line at a two for weekly. Georgia Jansen dribbles in, loses it, tie up. Stanford. Forces the jump ball. Possession arrow is with the Bobcats. Bowie's going to check back in for the red and blue. As Mara Johnson will check out. 48 seconds to go in the second quarter. Bowie inbounds. Jansen with the basketball. Flings it up. Hughes tries to put up a shot. I think that one deflected by East out of bounds, they say. A remain Bobcat basketball. Pass too hard to Ellie Hughes. Turnover, Bobcats. Fast break, but a travel. Downing moving a little bit too quickly right there. Turns it back over to the Bobcats with 33 seconds to go before halftime. Time out on the floor. We'll take it with them. Cats down big on the road. Waterloo East. Don't let concerns about shifts in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started by giving Zach Wall a call at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or visiting edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hey, Bobcat Nation, this is Kinsley Bowie. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. 38-15, Bobcats down big in the first half on the road at Waterloo East on Weir McGraw Court. As you take a look at Brian Murphy, we'll call, talk to him coming up at halftime of the boys game, but I, I'm sure he's going to have to really talk and work up his ladies at halftime because definitely see some ladies frustrated out here this afternoon, but some correctable things, but uh, when you're down by 20-plus points on the road, a tough road to hoe to come back. But Heitman drives in here, takes a jumper inside on the right block. It's good for two, and a good set play right there as Heitman gets her first bucket of the game this afternoon. So 21-point lead for Waterloo East. They'll play for the final shot of the first half. Stanford a crossover, and we have a whistle on the floor. I think we, was that a lane violation? Yeah, three seconds in the paint, so a lane violation Back to the Bobcats with five seconds. So the Bobcats will have the final shot of the first half. As Georgia Jansen checks out, Tanya Moore is into the game. Bowie will get the inbound. Let it roll a few. Bowie forces a three. Not a good look. She had a lady in her face and can't get the three to connect. And they'll take a 21-point deficit at halftime to locker room 38 17 is our score at halftime. Coming up, we'll get stats, and we'll also have our CAT connection at the break. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFJB-TV. The votes have been tallied, and the people have spoken. Central Iowa's home comfort specialist, Honest Heating and Cooling, is honored to have been voted best of the best in HVAC by you and the Times Republican. As a thanks, Honest is offering a 10% off sale, 10% off diagnostics, 10 off tune-ups, 10 off ductwork renovations, 
10% off full system upgrades. Offer valid through September. So thanks for voting for Honest Heating and Cooling, where you'll find Amana, America's brand for comfort. Honest. Picture yourself at Marshalltown Community College. Become a Tiger for Life. Visit ncc.iavalley.edu. Locations in both Marshalltown and Grinnell. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn's Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today. Our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances. Often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Pence Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. KFJV TV presents the Bobcat Halftime Report. Halftime at Waterloo East High School. Brandon Lewis with you this afternoon as the Bobcats down big at halftime, 38 to 17. Leading score for the Bobcats, Ellie Hughes. Five points in that first half to go along with her five rebounds as well. Frankie Long this afternoon, just a two-point bucket, but five rebounds for the Bobcats. And in that first half, Millie Hedman, two points and five rebounds as well. So Bobcats, a lot of work to do in the second half. We'll have to settle down and get a little bit of flow. Too many turnovers this afternoon. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, Waterloo East Trojans, Aliyah Weekly, she has six points at the break. Also, Jada Latiker, she has nine at the break. Jemaya Caesar with ten. Also, ten for uh, Jayla Stanford. She has ten at the break. And Sienna Cody with four at halftime as well. That's where we stand. We'll take a quick time out and we'll get our cat connection when we come back. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFJB TV. You look forward to retirement as your time to relax. But now that it's here, turns out relaxation is overrated and you'd rather get back to work with an idea of your own. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement plans change course, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level, all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, downtown Marshalltown, is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. It is our Cat Connection on KFJB TV. Now joined by Frankie Long for the Marshalltown Girls basketball team. All right, so top rebounder in the state so far this season up there. Top five, uh, you know, in 5A, we've seen you dominate getting rebounds out there. And, and especially offensive rebounds have been so pivotal. Uh, you were kind of telling me just a little bit about how important that could be, right, for extra possessions for your team. Yeah, and like... You know that rebounds are extra possession for your team, and if the defense, the defensive side gets them, then they get a whole possession, and we, I try to get as many possessions for our team as I can. Yeah, and uh, of course it's been huge, but on the girls' side of things, I mean, you can't, you can't teach six one, right? So uh, you're using that to your advantage, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting used to it. <laughs> yeah, this is a, this is a team that that uh, has been a lot of fun to, to watch this year. Um, just not only because it's young, but just a lot of inspiration already eclipsed the win total from a year ago. How fun has it been for you to be involved with this team that feels like it's just on the upward, uh, you know, progression? Yeah, it's definitely different than Miller, and it's a lot more fun because we do a lot more team things. 
and we all just have a lot of fun with it and we're all close and it's just it's just a lot of fun yeah um you know heading into this season what was kind of your expectation was it just try to soak in as much as you can yeah i was just trying to i'm just trying to soak it all in and also just have fun and learn and know that's my first year and make sure that i make improvements for years coming Coach Murphy indicated that you've been kind of itching to, to get on varsity since about seventh grade. It, 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 is this a point of emphasis for you that, you know, it's just kind of Bobcat pride and you, you've you been really looking forward to helping get the, the girls basketball team turned around? Yeah, I've just been looking forward to playing basketball in high school since I've been younger and, and I've been getting more involved in basketball and it's just been a lot of fun. How, you know, from the start of the season to now, where do you feel like your confidence level is? Um, definitely a lot better because at my first game I was telling Kinsley like I'm scared like I don't know how this is going to go and then I just went on the court and played and it was fun and then I've been looking forward to every game like every day. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you have any goals, things you're trying to accomplish for the rest of the season? Just have fun and keep learning. All right. Hey, that's a that's a good one. That is for sure. Hey, uh, best of luck rest of the year. Thank you. All right. That is Frankie Long with our Cat Connection on KFJB TV. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same, and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problem. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. As you walk inside, you know right away the place for fun is Wayward Social. There's always plenty of bowling action, so plan for your next outing to include bowling at Wayward Social. Also, meet your friends for lunch, dinner, or your favorite beverages. You will also absolutely love their daily lunch specials, Monday through Friday, including endless pizza by the slice. You choose the toppings. Wayward Social is now open at 11.30 a.m., seven days a week. Wayward Social on South 6th Street in Marshalltown. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by Assured Partners, Power Through Partnership, Boy Scouts of America, Adventure On, Edward Jones, Zach Wall, your financial advisor in Marshalltown, Ember's Retirement Community, Independent Living for Active Seniors, Honest Heating and Cooling, let the Honest Team watch over your home's comfort 24-7. Welcome back to East High School. Bobcats down 38-17 up on the Marshalltown Hive scoreboard. Let's check an area scoreboard update. All brought to you by Central State Bank. Yeah, discover what they can do for new locations in Ames State Center and in West Des Moines. Well, final in girls basketball, Cedar Rapids Prairie downs Dubuque Hempstead 73-49. to That's the only final so far this afternoon that we have. Ankeny is taking on Ballard tonight, and uh, Millard over in Omaha taking on Johnston in girls basketball. And a final from earlier today. Iowa State snuck by TCU, 73-72 in men's hoops. Also Purdue, 84-70 over Iowa. And uh, I saw the Ravens were leading the Texans 3 to nothing early on in that playoff football game. Take a quick timeout. Again, Bobcats trailing by 21 at the break on KFJB-TV. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to Marshalltown. Hey Bobcat Nation, my name is Frankie Long and you are watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Getting ready to go for the second half this afternoon, 38-17 as the Bobcats trailing the Trojans. This one a lot on the line this afternoon as these two teams with 
two wins in the Iowa Lions North Conference standings as Waterloo East is 2-4 and four in conference play. They're 3-8 and eight overall. Meanwhile, the Marshalltown Bobcats 5-6 and six overall, but they are 2-3 and three in conference play. So definitely meaning a lot for this game this afternoon. Bobcats have their work cut out for them, trailing by 21 as we are underway in the second half. A drive and a kick. And a three is no good by Caesar. And that one, last touch by Bowie. She was trying to track it down but couldn't get to it. And so it will remain with the Trojans. Heitman swipes at the inbound pass and almost got it. An NBA three, why not? An air ball along with the rebound. Up to Capeyu. Capeyu will push. It's a two on three, but she knifes right in between the Trojans and can't get the layup to go. Boy, that was a great play by Capeyu. Very aggressive, but just did not pay off. Trojans tried to corral the basketball. Couldn't, so it will remain with the Bobcats. Along the baseline, Bowie will inbound. Drop it into Long. Turn around quickly. Nice play by Frankie Long. Sometimes she takes her time and hesitates, but right there, really just attacked quickly, and it paid off offensively to get a bucket. A drive and lose the basketball inside the paint is Cody. Turnover back to the Bobcats. Bowie will bring it in. Cody guarding on her up to Heitman. Capayu. Thought about the three drives, and her shot is blocked, and they say there is contact. Free throws to come. The foul will be on Latiker, her second. First free throw is off the back of the iron. No good for Capeyu as she heads the line for the first time this afternoon. Second free throw is no good as well. Rebound by Norman. Brings it up. Kicks it out to the far side corner. A drive to the free throw line. Now to the top of the key. And a three from straight on by Cody is good. Seven points in the game for Cody now. Backdoor pass to Ellie Hughes. Misses it. Gets the rebound, and the putback is good. A little more flow for the Bobcat ladies, which is good to see out of the halftime break. Seven points for Hughes this afternoon. Wide open three. Strong, but a rebound in the paint. And the putback by Cease. No good. Heitman comes away with it. She'll bring it up court herself. Little hesitation, tries to pass it up and flips it right to her mom. Mom is right there to bark out what we need to do better on that play. <laughs> coach and her daughter like that. Pretty uh, pretty fun to see as uh, Megan Heitman, assistant coach for the Bobcats, caught that basketball as it was knocked away. Capay wide open, the three wide odd. And that one off the left side of the iron. Heitman with a rebound. The putback, she's fouled on the way up. She'll go to line. Two free throws. I think that was Pratchett who's checked in. And if so, that's her first of the afternoon. Did not see a number on the indication. Might have been on Downing. As that was, no, it was on Pratchett. So that will be her first of the afternoon. I don't think we really saw her log many minutes in the first half. Pratchett standing at just five foot and a senior. Free throws, no good. So Heitman misses the first, second to come here. Bobcats, unfortunately, not a lot of free throw attempts this afternoon. One of three in the first half. As Heitman misses the second one. Bobcats are 0 for 4 at the stripe in the second half already. So 20-point game, under six minutes to go, third quarter. Stanford gives it back, straight on shot. Off the back of the iron by Pratchett. Rebound, though, underneath. Shot hits the bottom of the backboard. Caesar 
Miss out one as long as gets the rebound. Bowie drops it into Capayu. Capayu back to Bowie. Three. Going to be off the mark the right side. Bobcats go for it. Long. Scrum. Comes away with it. Back to Heitman. Now to Bowie. Three. Come on. Get in there. No. Off the back of the iron. Misses it. Long. Almost got the rebound, but Stanford beats her out. She'll take it all the way in. And unguarded. Nobody picks her up. And Stanford again. She's done that numerous times this afternoon. She has 12. Somebody's got to stop her on the way to the rack. Heitman drives, drives baseline, right side. Around the perimeter, Bobcats will go with it. Capayu down to the right block. That one just kind of almost ripped out of there. She did get it to Long, but Long misses the shot inside. And Caesar beats out for the rebound. She'll take it herself. She puts a shoulder down. That's going to be a foul. Now Caesar definitely out of control right there. She just tried to bully over Ellie Hughes, who had set up shop. Caesar just her first foul of the night. Third team foul. Somebody's got to come up court and help out. And Stanford reads it like a playbook that she knows. Forces the turnover, and the layup is good. And now the Bobcats throw it away again. Downing comes away with it. Into the paint. Left hand the layup. Good. Grayson Downing, her first bucket of the afternoon. Waterloo putting on some heat. With that pressure of the backcourt, a reaching foul is going to be called, though, on Stanford. Fourth foul of the contest in the third quarter for Waterloo East. Stanford with that foul immediately checks out. Tanya Mora down to the right block, draws a foul, and the ball rolls off the left side of the iron. Almost an and one, but Tanya Mora to the line for two. Foul on Pratchett, her second. Five team fouls now on Waterloo East, so Bombcats will be shooting free throws for the rest of the quarter, but it doesn't really matter because the Bobcats are 0 for 5 here in this quarter. Unfortunately, have not been very good at the free throw line this afternoon. And finally, one made. One of six here in the first half, or in the second half. They were one of three in the first half. An inside shot by Waterloo West is Miss Bowie with the rebound. Clear out to Sydney Capayu. Up to the left wing. She'll settle in, picks up a dribble, drops to Georgia Jansen. And up and under move, but comes up short on the left side of the glass. It hits. Rebound by Cody. She dribbles it off of her knee, gathers it back in, will dribble some more up to the far side corner. Long distance shot. It's a two by Weekly. Good. Eight for Weekly. Bowie picks up the dribble. Cody puts pressure on her. Georgia Jansen will have a reach-in foul on Weekly. But that was led by poor ball control by the Bobcats. Weekly picks up her second of the afternoon. Plenty of fouls and plenty of turnovers to be had this afternoon. And unfortunately, plenty of missed free throws as Georgia Jansen misses the first of two free throws to come here. Second one for Jansen. And that one no good as well. Bobcats, one of eight in the second half of the free throw line. They've had their opportunities. But have not been able to convert. 
Bit of a foul on the floor. Hold's going to be called on Moon. Kagira Moon picks up her first foul of the afternoon. And we have a timeout on the floor. Bobcats down big on the road, 49-22 up on the Marshalltown Hy-Vee scoreboard. There's a city within a city not far from here. This city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. This city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. Hey, Bobcat fans. I'm Georgia Banson, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. 49-22 up on the Marshalltown Hy-Vee scoreboard. 3.07 to go, third quarter. After the foul on Waterloo East by Moon, Heitman, or excuse me, Georgia Jansen at the line for two. And Jansen makes the free throw. Waterloo East had five fouls on them early on in this quarter, but the Bobcats have not been able to make them pay as the second free throw by Jansen is no good. She is one of four on the afternoon. Runner in the paint is good. As Cody for two. Nine on the afternoon, five second half points. Samara Johnson to the rack. Right side misses it. Heitman rebound out to Tanya Mora. Her floater in the paint is no good. Heitman rebound, put back, no good. Swatted out of there by Cody. Coming away with it is Grayson Downing. Now Cody in transition, bounce pass inside. Moon uses a glass, no good. Rebound, put back. Moon does it all. And the freshman checks in. Getting her first bucket of the afternoon. It's 53-23. It's a 30-point game just like that. And hard to believe the Bobcats were up early in this one. They started 3-0. I think they were up 5-2 or 5-3. And then ever since that point, it's been all Waterloo East. Tejada at the line for two. The hottest first is off the right side, no good. Tahada with the second. Another missed free throw for the Bobcats. And Bonnie check. Amara Johnson's going to pick up a foul. That'll be her second in the afternoon. Bobcats just 2 of 12 at the stripe here in the second half. Inbounds pass quickly to Shepard. Takes a jumper, has it ripped away. She gets it right back, puts up a shot foul on her way up. 2.02 to go in the third quarter, and I don't know how many total overall fouls we have, but both teams average right around 15 fouls a game. I think we've already hit that here in the third quarter. And free throw by Niasia Shepard. No good. Shepard with the second. And that one no good as well. So Niasha Shepard can't convert on either free throw. She has not made a free throw this season. And the Bobcats throw up court to Amira Johnson off of her fingertips out of bounds. And a 30-point game nearing two minutes to go in the third. Or just under two minutes to go in the third. Three near side corner. No good by Weekly. Bobcats get the rebound, and Amira Johnson will come up with it eventually. She'll take it all the way, but the layup is off the bottom of the backboard. And back to the Trojans with 90 seconds to go in the third quarter. Weekly three is 
Got a miss right here as the Bobcats try to get the basketball. Thought that might have been off of uh, Nyasha Shepard, but it was not. Cody will inbounds. And Moon on the inbound play. Puts it off the glass for two. It's good, and she draws a foul to make it a three-point play. Kagira Moon, a 28% free throw shooter. And the and one is out of there. Capay with the rebound. Nice move by Amira Johnson. Steps in between two Trojans. And picks up her second bucket of the afternoon. And now we have a foul on Weekly. That'll be her third of the afternoon. Free throw shots for the Bobcats. Yeah, I have it as the Trojans already have 15 fouls on them. And I believe the Bobcats in a similar situation themselves. Ellie Hughes makes the first free throw. And the second one will rattle in for Hughes. Nine points for Ellie Hughes this afternoon. To go along with seven rebounds. So good afternoon for Ellie Hughes, stats-wise. Trojans turn it over, and the Bobcats get the ball back. Letter a minute to go, third quarter. It's a hot bounce pass over to Mara Johnson. Baseline left side, drives in, kicks back to Heitman. And a good drive by Heitman, but a little bit too strong. But Ellie Hughes, the rebound, put back, scores it for two. Some reserves into the game for Waterloo East as Bombcats try to work their way back in here. An impressive effort by the Waterloo East Trojans, who look like they're going to go to three and four in conference play. Jada Latiker is checking back in. Jayla Stanford. Also checking back in for the Trojans. Heitman trying to get it to Capayu, but it's just thrown away. Stanford attacking, kicks back out, top of the key, three. And Latiker hits another one. That's her third three of the afternoon. She is good from long distance as Amara Johnson Tries to get a bucket at the end of the third. It's 58-29. Cats trailing on the road. Since 1967, Jensen Ford Lincoln has served generations of families around central Iowa. Quality vehicles, professional service, knowledge of our product, that's a part of Jensen. But what's more important to us is a trust that has passed down from every previous generation. Jensen Ford Lincoln wants to serve your family for generations. We want to be there for your first car. We want to be there for your family SUV, and we want to see you drive away in the Mustang you always dreamed of. At Jensen, we want to be here for you now and every mile along the way. Hey, Bobcat fans, it's Ellie Hughes, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KJB TV. 58-29 up on the Marshalltown High Beast scoreboard. Uh, we are going to head to the fourth quarter. Coming up in just a moment, we step aside once again right here on KJB TV. At Honest Heating and Cooling, they take comfort seriously. Their latest offering? Smart Integrity Monitoring. Combined with an honest maintenance plan, it takes all the guessing out of home comfort. Their technicians take accurate measurements of all the necessary parameters and deliver you the truth about where your home's comfort stands. If you're not measuring, you're just guessing. That's honest. Get a Smart Integrity Monitoring plan and let the Honest team watch over your home's comfort 24-7. Honest Heating and Cooling. Hey Bobcats, this is Aubrey Tejada. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Bobcats with the basketball to start the fourth quarter, but a five seconds closely guarded. And that'll be a turnover on the Bobcats as Kinsley Bowie was 
called with that. 58-29, our score up on the Marshalltown Ivy scoreboard. Cody drives down to the right block. Uh, no foul called as shot is missed. And a forced jump ball. Possession arrow, Waterloo East has it. They are up by 29 right now. Shot from the far side corner. That one is going to be a foul on the Bobcats. A couple of shots coming. That'll make it a 30-point lead as Cody puts in the first free throw. A 66% free throw shooter on the season. And 11 points for Cody. They did actually rule that was a three, so. Sixty-one twenty-nine is our score. As Cody makes all three free throws. Heidman gets the ball back as it was almost thrown away. Out high to Jansen. Three off the left side of the iron. It bounces out. Rebound brought in by Caesar. Up the far sideline, she brings it. And Heitman knocks one out of bounds. That'll stay with Waterloo East, but good effort right there on the defensive end. East dribbles into the free throw line, but losing it. Norman. Senior turns it over back to the Bobcats. Trailing by 32. Jansen inside. She goes in a blocking foul. Latiker steps in late and picks up the foul. I think they are going to rule that a shooting foul, and that will mean two free throws. Georgia Jansen, one of four at the free throw stripe this afternoon. And the first one is up and good for Georgia Jansen. 41% free throw shooter coming into this contest this afternoon. And that one is good as well. 30-point game, 61-31. Bobcats almost got a turnover now. Stanford has her shot blocked. In the paint by the Bobcats, but they do retain possession. Floater in the paint is no good, and now coming away with it. Georgia Jansen with a rebound for the Bobcats. Clear out to Bowie, and she'll bring it across the timeline. Gets a screen. And tries to pass it in. It's knocked out. Maya Norman tipped that one out as she was guarding. Bowie will inbound. Tanya Mora jumps up and catches the inbound. Kind of lost her footing. Lost the basketball as well in transition, Stanford. That one pops out, a rare miss for her from inside. Good jump by Jansen with a rebound. Got it to Bowie. Bowie lost it. Now Jansen will bring it up court. Into the front court, and it looks like a reach is going to be called on Cody. She is shocked. Fourth of the afternoon. Aubrey Dejada is into the game for the Bobcats as Jansen will check out as assistant coach Megan Heitman gives a little pep talk there. Mora operating the guard and throws it in the free throw lane. And Norman comes away with it in transition. A block. But... Two fouls, or two shots coming as they rule it a shooting foul. So Stanford just attacking. She is relentless at 5'6". The senior guard just relentless in attacking the Bobcats in transition. And has made the Bobcats pay for it this afternoon. Free throw is off the back of the iron. No good for Stanford. Stanford. 
She is two of four at the line this afternoon. 15 points for Stanford. Now Capayu. All over. Throws it into the backcourt. Turnover, Bobcats. With five and a half minutes to go. 62-31. Quick timeout on KFJB TV. You're watching Bobcat Athletics. Don't let concerns about shifts in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started by giving Zach Wall a call at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or visiting edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hi, I'm Amira Johnson, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB-TV. Well, a turnover by the Trojans and a missed shot in there as well. And Trojans getting the basketball inside of the paint here as we come back. 5-16, fourth quarter, 62-31. Bobcats trailing as they're going to drop to 5-7 and seven with this loss this afternoon. Also dropped down in the standings behind Waterloo East in the Iowa Lions Conference North as these two teams came in. Bobcats were ahead of the Trojans in conference standings as the Bobcats were 2-3 and three and the Trojans 2-4, and four, but they will now flip-flop places with that head-to-head. -head. Second free throw is good. Caesar was able to get the second half. disagreement about whose basketball that was, but the Trojans will have it. Cody inside the paint jumper from the left high post. No good. Bowie tried to get the rebound. Could not. Off of her fingertips out of bounds, and Trojans will keep it. Trojans inbound, but throw it into the Bobcat bench. Turnover. 5.09 to go in this one. Bowie gets it into Tejada. Picks up her dribble in a bad spot, though. And up to Bowie. Before it went out of bounds, a timeout was called on the floor. We'll take a timeout with them. 5.04 to go in Waterloo in the girls' game. Boys' game right around the corter. It's 63-31 up on the Marshalltown High B scoreboard. The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines. Hey, I'm Harper Wilson, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. 504 remaining. Waterloo East High School on Weir McGraw Corp. Brandon Lewis with you to this afternoon. Thanks so much for joining our coverage here on KFJB TV. It's been all Waterloo East this afternoon. Bobcats took the lead to open up the game, but since that point did not, and now Tejada could not make her mind up on getting that ball in bounds and a five-second count turnover on the Bobcats. Cody will inbound. Top of the key, drive in by Caesar. Floaters good for two. And Elmora nearly loses and out of bounds. Up to Bowie, picked up by Stanford. And that is going to be a foul on the Bobcats. Stanford hit on the arm on the way up. Mora picks up the foul, her second of the afternoon. First free throw by Stanford is no good. Off the front of the iron. Two 
two of five at the stripe this afternoon for Stanford. 47% at the line this year. And that one off the right side of the iron. No good, but the rebound put back by Jada Latiker is good for two. And they did count the free throw. Did we have a foul there? They did not quite see what the whistle was for. I think we had a quick substitution on the shooter. Inbound hits the bottom of the... Hoop and a jump ball position arrow is with the Bobcats, but we do have a running clock for the final four minutes. As it is a 36 point lead now for Waterloo East. Mora with the inbound pass. She gets it, dribbles off her foot out of bounds. Back to Waterloo East. The focus just purely, unfortunately, not there this afternoon for the Bobcat ladies. This is a game that they should not be trailing by 36 in, but they are. They just got really outworked here this afternoon. Things really compounded as well when shots were not going and turnovers were happening. Nobody put an end to him. There's Mora for three, and that one's off the glass. And the Trojans still attacking with Moon. Cherry picking right there as it will go out of bounds. Last touch by Moon. And she got the feed up court, but uh, her and Latiker just could not connect. It was looking to be a good play for them, but... Now the Bobcats will turn it over immediately on the inbound play. Cody, pass to Moon. Moon flails up for the shot. Latiker with the rebound. Poked out of there, but Cody comes up with it. And Bowie hanging all over her. That'll send Cody to line. That is number four on Bowie this afternoon. And a free throw by Cody. Good. One more to come. And that one is good as well. She is six of seven at the free throw line this afternoon is Sienna Cody. Mara Johnson into the paint, loses a dribble. East flailing, loses it on the baseline. Back to the Bobcats with two and a half minutes to go in the game. Frankie Long off the bench. She'll check back in for the Bobcats. As Tanya Mora will come out. Turnover, downing. She's going to be bumped and a push by Bowie, and that'll be her fifth. She'll be done for the night. Georgia Jansen will replace her. So Bowie's afternoon is done. As Grayson Downing will head to the line as that foul comes, says the Bobcats with five fouls here in the fourth quarter alone. Downing, nothing but that. She's a 63% free throw shooter. She has three points on the afternoon now after that made free throw. And that one is good. She makes both. Again, just sh it should not be a 40-point game. Coming in, looking at these two teams on paper. You knew Water Luis was going to be very physical, especially with their smaller guards. And they have been. But the Bobcats have just not matched that. And unfortunately, kind of get run out of the gym this afternoon at Weirmark McGraw Court at Waterloo East High School. Long catches the inbound, uh, inbound from Heitman, and a foul's going to be called on the floor. 
That is the fourth team foul. First foul of the afternoon. On Zarco Cruz, who's checked in. Billy Heitman with the bucket right there for two. Six points for Heitman this afternoon. And a minute to go at Waterloo East High School in the girls' game. Boys' game coming up in just a little bit. As uh, Bobcats has got their sixth win of the season last night. As they took down Waterloo West, 52-46. Capella wide open the paint, misses the turnaround jumper. Trojans work it up court. Almost turn it over. Downing down to the left block, gets tied up with Georgia Jansen and possession arrow with Waterloo East. Give the Trojans the basketball back. Downing gets the inbounds. Goes baseline, runner in the paint, no good. Moon, rebound, put back good for two. And that'll do it. It's a 40-point win for Waterloo East this afternoon. They improved to 4-8. and eight. They're now 3-4 and four in conference play. As the Bobcats ladies drop to 5-7, and seven. they're now 2-4 and four in conference action. And a very disappointing loss by 40 points. Coming in, these two teams fairly even on paper. But now Waterloo East Trojans are 9-2 against Marshalltown in girls basketball since 2014. We head to the locker room report coming up next right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB-TV. Some drivers trade cars every year or every other year. Some drive their cars till they drop. Whatever kind of driver you are, Lennox Employees Credit Union is here to get you into the car for your style of driving. You're invited to go to our website, LennoxECU.com, for membership eligibility and loan rates, or call the office to talk to a loan officer. The loan process is quick and easy. Low auto loan rates from Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown's steakhouse. Ribeyes and sirloins, aged, hand-cut, and served with your choice of two of Legends' legendary sides and a dinner roll. If you are a prime rib fan, Legends has prime rib every Friday and Saturday starting at 4 p.m. With three sides to choose from, it's chef-seasoned and slow-cooked to tender, juicy perfection. Try Legends prime rib and you'll know why it's Marshalltown's favorite. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown's steakhouse. The KFJB TV Locker Room Report, presented by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. Well, a loss for Waterloo East, or excuse me, Marshalltown against Waterloo East here this afternoon as the ladies come up short. Six points for Millie Heitman, nine rebounds, almost a double double for Ellie Hughes, nine points, nine rebounds, four points for Frankie Long, and eight rebounds, three points and six rebounds for Georgia Jansen, Amara Johnson off the bench. She finishes with four. 15 for Stanford, the guard. Uh, Jayla Stanford, really good player, 5'6", and a senior. And she had 15 points this afternoon as Sianna Cody had a nice afternoon. The 5'9", sophomore, 14 points, and she made five free throws. Uh, in the second half, she went 6 of 7 at the free throw strike here this afternoon for the Waterloo East Trojans. So the Bobcats fall to 5 and 7. They're now 2 and 4 in Iowa Alliance Conference North action. Waterloo East Trojans move up a spot in conference standings ahead of the Bobcats as they improve to 4 and 8. And they are now 3 and 4 in conference play. We'll get you a scoreboard updates as we are in the locker room report. And we'll also get you ready to go for the boys game coming up momentarily right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB-TV. You look forward to retirement as your time to relax. But now that it's here, turns out relaxation is overrated and you'd rather get back to work with an idea of your own. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement plans change course, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. 
Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. There's a city within a city not far from here. The city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. The city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. Today's game on KFJB TV is brought to you by Jensen Ford, with you every mile along the way. Legends American Grill, Marshalltown Steakhouse. Lennox Employees Credit Union, LennoxECU.com. Marshalltown Area Chamber, Marshalltown, more than ever. Marshalltown Community College, a step in the right direction. Well, once again, up on the Marshalltown Ivy scoreboard, 73-33, the final, a 40-point loss for the Marshalltown girls basketball team as they are on the road here this afternoon. Get your scoreboard updates. All brought to you by Central State Bank. 10-10 between the Texans and Ravens in NFL playoff action this afternoon. Iowa State men's basketball, 73-72, as they took down TCU by one earlier today. Purdue topped Iowa, 84-70 in uh, men's basketball. Also around the state of Iowa, a final score earlier, Prairie top Dubuque, Hempstead in girls basketball, 73-49 to was the final score there. And, yeah, that's the only one we have as of right now for girls basketball, light Saturday afternoon around the state of Iowa. We'll head to the countdown to tip-off. Get you ready for the boys game as they're out warming up in Waterloo. Great to have you tuned in this afternoon. This is Bobcat Basketball right here on KFJB-TV. You planned and saved for your child to go to college, but medical school after graduation was a surprise, a happy, expensive surprise. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When opportunities surprise you, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. He's drops back, looks to pass. He's got him oh. in the flat. That's Tate Ray makes the catch. He's up to midfield. He breaks away at the 40, 30, 20. 10 touchdown, Tate Ring, his second one of the night. It's Adventure On for Marshalltown Scouting. Adventures like backpacking, zip lining, rock climbing, canoeing, swimming, and more. Survival skills for a scout's greatest adventure, life. Scouts give back to the community. Marshalltown Scouts have provided over 1 million hours of service to our community in our 70-plus year history. Scout leaders are highly trained in screen. Parents are a huge part of scouting, too. Scouting provides unique opportunities available nowhere else. To learn more about scouting in Marshalltown, go to iascouts.org. Adventure On! Welcome to the Countdown to Tip Off on your home for the Bobcats, KFJB TV. Well, the Marshalltown boys basketball team on a two game streak as they took down Des Moines East on Tuesday night. And one of their best victories of the season came last night inside the Marshalltown Roundhouse, a 52 46 win against Waterloo West. They look to keep it going here this afternoon with a tough contest on the road against the Waterloo East Trojans. Trojans, meanwhile, they won last night 81-73 over Mason City. They lost the previous night, Thursday night, inside Wells Fargo Arena, 88-75 to the Roosevelt Rough Riders. So both teams definitely looking for a big victory in conference play this afternoon. We'll count you down to tip-off. Coming up next, we will get our pregame chat with head coach Mike Apple. This is the countdown to tip-off. You're watching KFJB-TV. 
As you walk inside, you know right away the place for fun is Wayward Social. There's always plenty of bowling action, so plan for your next outing to include bowling at Wayward Social. Also, meet your friends for lunch, dinner, or your favorite beverages. You will also absolutely love their daily lunch specials, Monday through Friday, including endless pizza by the slice. You choose the topics. Wayward Social is now open at 11.30 a.m., seven days a week. Wayward Social on South 6th Street in Marshalltown. Welcome back to Waterloo East High School. Let's take a look around the conference this afternoon. As uh, we mentioned with the girls' side of things, definitely a light afternoon in the state of Iowa as far as boys' basketball goes. Uh, we've got this one here this afternoon. Also, Lewis Central is taking on Malcolm Pella and Roland Story. Um, Pella and Roland Story, a final 71-62 from earlier this afternoon. Bondurant for our Mount Vernon. Also... Looking at other scores around the state of Iowa. Uh, Dallas Center Grimes in action against Carroll. Also, Linville Sully taking on Tri-County earlier, 86-19, a final score from that one. Des Moines Hoover and Cedar Falls playing this afternoon. We'll get you an update hopefully on that one. Dubuque Senior is uh, playing all the way up in Milwaukee. How about that? They're playing that one at Loris, but they're playing in Milwaukee School. Also, Waterloo West in action this afternoon against Ankeny Centennial, so we'll continue to keep you up to date throughout the afternoon. Coming up next, we will get a look at our keys to the game this afternoon. We'll do that next. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFJB TV. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problems. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. Coming up at halftime, we will chat with Brian Murphy, head girls basketball coach, get his reaction to the girls' loss from earlier this afternoon. Time for our keys to the game here this afternoon for the Waterloo East Trojans. It's dogs or dog tired. They've played now three in a row as they uh, lost to Roosevelt on Thursday night as they defeated Mason City last night. Or are they going to get back here on their home floor and put on a good effort like they usually do since... Uh, 2016, they are 3-1 and one against your Marshalltown Bobcats as the last win for the Bobcats came back in 2022 on February 21st. Uh, Armani Thomas had 21 points and helped lead the Bobcats to a victory that night. Meanwhile, Marshalltown, cat scratch fever. They got to be tough and rough here this afternoon. They know they have to uh, come out strong against a, a physical Waterloo East team to get the victory this afternoon and continue their winning ways as they've won a couple in a row with a win Tuesday against East, Des Moines East, and Waterloo West last night. Coming up, we will get our pregame chats. All brought to you by Exterior Plus Home Remodeling Services in Marshalltown. We'll visit with head coach Mike Apple. This is the Countdown to Tip Off. You're watching KFJB TV. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn's Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today, our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances, often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Pence Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. Welcome back into the Countdown to Tip-Off here on KFJB-TV. Our pregame chat with Coach, all brought to you by Exterior Plus Home Remodeling in Marshalltown. Well, less than 24 hours, your team is back at action. Fresh off a win last night, 52-46 to on your home floor against Waterloo West, one of your best wins of the season. You know, team did a lot of really good things, but you got to kind of flush that and move on here this afternoon with a pivotal conference game on tap. Yeah, you know, the, the one thing I emphasize is just come in with that same mindset we had last night. We were ready to play a basketball game, so I said just, just whatever approach you took last night, let's try and copy that and do the same thing. 
you know, Waterloo East, always a, a tough opponent. You guys won in three against them since 2016. Uh, last year they swept you. This is always a big game. I mean, you, you have to be ready, kind of like you alluded to. We do. You know, we got to be ready to defend and, and, you know, get back in transition. They're a team that wants to score and, and, and uh, they want to speed you up to get easy baskets. And, you know, they have a lot of guys that, with the ability to score it, and, they, and that shows with their stats. You know, there's not just one guy that – uh, is leading him in scoring. It's all very balanced, so we got to be ready to guard all five guys. You know, in their past couple of games, they've taken on Mason City. They got the win last night on the road. They lost uh, against Roosevelt at Wells Fargo Arena. So they are playing three in a row. Is there any way that you can really take advantage of that coming up here on the road? Yeah, you know, it alludes back to what I said earlier, just being more prepared and be, or just being ready, more ready to play than them and, and, and jump on them early I think would be huge for us um, and, and get the lead early. We usually do well when that happens and we can kind of control the pace of the game. You know, if we do that, uh, take care of the ball, execute on offense, you know, continue to cut hard, set good screens, move the ball, and, uh, and get easy baskets that way. Health-wise, 24 hours later, still looking pretty good with your team? Yeah, everyone's, everyone's good to go, ready to play. Good luck this afternoon. Yep, thank you. All right, Trojans, Bobcats coming up in a little bit. We'll check out your starting lineup right here on KFJB TV. My name's Lake Schultz. I'm the co-owner of Exterior Plus Home Remodeling. At Exterior Plus, we truly strive to build relationships one customer at a time. And that's why we're the Midwest's number one choice in full home remodels. Located in Marshalltown, Iowa, as well as Lincoln, Nebraska, we pride ourselves in providing quality service on time, every time. Give us a call for a free inspection and estimate at 844-261-6111. That's 844-261-6111. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by Assured Partners, power through partnership. Boy Scouts of America, adventure on. Edward Jones, Zach Wall, your financial advisor in Marshalltown. Ember's Retirement Community, independent living for active seniors. Honest Heating and Cooling, let the Honest Team watch over your home's comfort 24-7. Bobcats, Trojans, get ready to do battle here on KFJB TV. Let's get you tonight's starting lineup. It's all brought to you by Sandvik Enterprises in Marshalltown. Let them deliver for you while we deliver you the starting lineup. For Mike Saylor in his first year for the Waterloo East Trojans, it'll be number two, Dejon Sharkey. Averaging 8.4 points per game, 2.3 rebounds per game, a 5-4 senior guard. Number three, Deshondas Moore, 8.6 points per game, 2.9 rebounds per game. A 6'2 junior forward, an 80% free throw shooter. That'll be an interesting category to keep an eye on here this afternoon between these two teams. Number 10, Masio Hicks, 3.4 points per game, 5.6 rebounds per game, a 6'2 senior forward. And number 10, Masio Hicks. Number 21, Jeremiah Clark, 9 points per game, averaging just over 4 rebounds per game. Just over two assists per game, a 6-1 junior guard, Jeremiah Clark. And routing out the five for the Trojans, Ada Muhammad, 6.9 points per game for the 6-2 senior four. For the Marshalltown Bobcats, number one, Carter Gianetto, eight points per game, 3.7 rebounds per game, a 5-10 senior for the Bobcats behind head coach Mike Apple in his sixth year. Number three, Treshawn Brooks, eight points per game, 4.7 rebounds per game, and four assists a game for the 6-1 senior. Kyle Smith, number 10 for the Bobcats, a 6'3 sophomore. Number 11, Corey Smith, a 6'1 senior. And number 24, Rahelio Sarin, round out the five for the Bobcats this afternoon. Eight minutes on the clock. We're about ready to go. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFJB TV. You're an empty nester closing in on that retirement property. Chances are your plans didn't include mom moving in, but life happens and you do the right thing. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement means caring for yourself and a loved one, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problems. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. 
The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. afternoon as Sharkey opens up the scoring two-point bucket Bobcats missed a three from Treshawn Brooks to open up the game Giannetto near side wing up to Treshawn Brooks double team Kyle Smith off a screen three pops in and out and now falls in for three Kyle Smith for the Bobcats give them the lead three to two Bobcats averaging 49 points per game coming into this one. 66 points per game for the Trojans, but they give up 71. They want to get out and run, that is for sure. Sharkey right wing, now dribbling to the top of the key. He dribbles down the left side of the paint, kicks out. Far side corner, it is no good. Rebound, though, on the right block, Muhammad. Put back, no good. And another offensive rebound, I think, stepping out on the baseline. Deshondas Moore, turnover. And that is Bobcat basketball with 627. Carter Giannetto over to Treshawn Brooks, near side left wing. As Treshawn was just touching base with his coach as he was bringing that one up court. Now Rahelio Sarin, bounce pass, Giannetto open for the three. Left wing can't get that one to fall. And a rebound clear out by Muhammad. Clark resets. Guarded by Treshawn Brooks, down to the right block, kicks it back to the right wing. Now Sharkey for a three, can't get that one to go. Ball bouncing around, and finally Corey Smith saves it from out of bounds. Back to the Bobcats. Kyle Smith opens up quickly. Three is off the back of the iron. No good. Clark, rebound, pushing up court is Moore. Over to the left wing, a drive in from the left wing is no good on the shot floater right there by Muhammad. Shadow outlet to him. Up the far side, up to the top of the key. And left wing to Treshawn Brooks. Can't get the free throw line, jumper to fall. Moore attacking. And the foul, and one. And Moore, an 80% free throw shooter on the line for the and one. As the Trojans take back the lead 4 3. And it's a three-point play. Sean Brooks over the timeline into the front court. They'll drop it in to Corey Smith on the right block. He could not do anything with it. Now Gennetto attacks. Nobody picks up till late. His layup is no good. He was trying to scoop and score from the left side, but couldn't complete the play. Muhammad loses it, tries to throw it off of Rahelio Sarin. They call it a kick on Sarin. It'll stay with the Trojans on the right side of your radio dial. 5-3 the score. Trojans with the lead on top of your Bobcats. Pass it in way up high to Muhammad, who will hand off to Sharkey. Beautiful layup right there. As Clark gets his first bucket of the afternoon. Left-handed layup. Of 
Corey Smith looking, finds Giannetto, hesitates, now flies in. A runner in the paint is good. Giannetto, his first bucket of the afternoon. 7-5, to five, Bobcats trailing by two. Sharkey backs it out, gives the play call, sets up the offense for the Trojans. He'll set a screen now. Cross-court pass, out of bounds. Last off of Clark. And a substitution as Devarian Clark checks in for Maceo Hicks for the Trojans. Bobcats looking to take the lead or at least tie here on this possession in the opening quarter. Giannetto looking around and got it to Treshawn Brooks who gets tied up at the free throw line. Hesitation move, jumper from the left eye post is no good. Pushing it up is Clark, Devarian Clark, count it, he hits the deck, no foul, but Devarian Clark with the layup. And that's a pretty good attacking play right there for Waterloo East. Kyle Smith opens up off a screen, an air ball on the three, and Rahelio Sermon was trying for the rebound but couldn't get it. 9-5 the score. Quick moving opening quarter between these two teams who know each other really well. Have played some good games. Bobcats will have to be sharp this afternoon though. Three on the right wing as Clark was open. And a rebound inside and a putback attempt by Deshondas Moore. Shot was no good, but a foul will come in on Kyle Smith, his first foul of the afternoon. Excuse me, second foul of the afternoon. And the first free throw of the afternoon by Moore is, excuse me, second free throw of the afternoon is no good. He had one earlier, the and one situation. No free throw made right there on the trip, but a rebound inside, put back, missed. Another put back out of there. Treshawn Brooks comes away with the basketball. Over the timeline into the front courts. Giannetto now comes and gets it on the left wing, drops it in to Corey Smith. Just outside the left block, nice hesitation move. And he might have been touched on the arm. No foul called. Shot is missed in transition. Jeremiah Clark feeds it. Now Clark gets it back. Free throw line jumper. That one splash. Jeremiah Clark with four in the game. It's 11-5. And a bump. Foul's going to come in on Quinton Hartz. And actually before that foul, a timeout was called by the Bobcats. And Coach Mike Apple wants a timeout to think it over. 11-5 Bobcat basketball, 149 first quarter on KFJB TV. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress downtown Marshalltown is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. My name's Carter Giannetto, and you're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Back inside Waterloo East High School on Weir McGraw Court. Bobcats trailing early by six. Out of the timeout, Giannetto drives and can't score. Jacob Teeson is checked in. He tried to get the rebound, could not do it. Now Treshawn Brooks almost forces a turnover, throws it back to Waterloo East. East drives in, now kicks out, top of the key, three. It's off the mark, no good. Treshawn Brooks tipped that out of there. Luckily, cuts come away with it. Landon Sewell has checked in. It's a man who took the three right there. Treshawn into the front court, settles things down. Rahelio Sarin comes up, sets a screen. A 
work it to Giannetto right there. He drives into the paint, opens up, trying to go up and under, but not there. Pretty good defense by Keandre Owens, and now a travel on the Bobcats. Turnover. Actually, no, a foul comes in. I thought we saw a travel, but uh, no, it is going to be a foul on number 12, Quindon Hart. The junior will pick up his first foul of the afternoon. For the Waterloo East Trojans. Extra pass back and forth. Giannetto can't make him pay, though. He had a real good clean look on the right wing. Nearing 35 seconds in the opening quarter. Quick moving quarter. It's 11 to 5. Still that score up on the Marshalltown Ivy scoreboard is. Cats got a couple of quick buckets by Kyle Smith and Carter Giannetto, but since that point, if Really kind of dried up on the road here. Now a forced turnover. Good play. Got to slow it down. He did as Jacob Thiessen forces the turnover, takes it all the way himself for two. 11-7. Two seconds running down. Last second three will come up short. And after one quarter, it's 11-7. to seven. Waterloo East leading your Bobcats on KFJB-TV. Picture yourself at Marshalltown Community College. a tiger for life visit mcc.iavalley.edu locations in both marshalltown and grinnell hey bobcat nation it's jacob hayes you're watching bobcat basketball on kfjb tv 11 7 your score on the marshalltown high v scoreboard let's get a scoreboard update here this afternoon all brought to you by central state bank some good games around class 4a in boys basketball Indianola dropped by Clear Creek Amanda, though, today, 77-68. to The final score there. Ankeny hosts Waterloo West tonight. That game at 6 o'clock. And no score update on Hoover and Cedar Falls this afternoon. But another good game going on around the state of Iowa. Iowa men's basketball lost. Iowa State won uh, their game, a close one over TCU. Back here in Waterloo East, a jumper, the free throw line by Moore is missed. Rebound inside, missed, and a put back again by Owens. Keandre Owens, the 6'5 junior, will head to the free throw line as he was fouled on a second put back opportunity. Owens a 90% free throw shooter coming into this game. And the first one is missed. And Owens can't get either to go. Treshawn Brooks with the rebound for the Bobcats off the missed free throw. Trap at midcourt. Giannetto tries to come help, but not there in time. Sewell picks it off. Step back inside the three-point arc. Rebound. Put back by Moore is missed. And finally, this time by Key Andre Owens. His put back is good for two. 13-7. Some backcourt pressure being put on here in the second quarter. Corey Smith, he's going to be tied up, and a push is going to be called on Landon Sewell. And they actually rule it on Deshaun, Deshaundis Morris, or excuse me, Deshaundis Moore. That'll be his first foul of the afternoon. Inbound to Giannetto. Extra pass, Corey Smith. He loves the corners and knocks that one down. Corey Smith for three. Back to a three-point game. Right high post jumper. A little bit strong by Owens. Into the backcourt, the ball bounces around. Tipped out of there by the Bobcats last touched. Clark. 
Pass over to left wing. He loses it. Turnover on Waterloo East is again getting in there. Jacob Thiessen to help force those turnovers. Hey, Coach Mike Apple barking out the signals for the play call offensively. Trace John Brooks kicks out. Thiessen, Errant on the three. Tavarian Clark. Pass to the left wing. Now they drop it in the left block. Turn around and shot won't go, but a foul is going to be called as Keandre Owens was working on the left block. Corey Smith with the foul, his first of the afternoon. Owens, a couple of dribbles, spins the ball around, and the free throw is up, and it will also spin out. No good by Keandre Owens. Not a ton of free throw attempts coming into this one, but uh, he is 0 for 3 this afternoon. Second one, though, by Keandre Owens is good. He is 1 of 4 at the stripe, and he has 3 points to his name this afternoon. Bobcats beat the press. Saren with a nice feed to Corey Smith for two. More inside. Beats two Bobcats. Saren was late swiping there, but could not stop the play. Five in the game for Moore. More pressure being put on the Bobcats here in the second quarter. Treshawn, though, with a nice finger roll at the rack for two. And Brooks with his first bucket of the afternoon. More counters, though, with an unbelievable play. Stretched out. His 6-2 frame goes up at another bucket. Seven now. Bobcats in transition break the press, but a three. Can't get it to go for Tiesen in transition. Bobcats beat by Dejan Sharkey. Sharkey with four. Now Corey Smith to answer as the Bobcats run out. And it looks like Corey Smith is going to be fouled on that drive. That last play by Treshawn Brooks. Just a beautiful play to hang up in midair. Sean Brooks to inbound. Finds Corey Smith. Quick catch and shoot and a good play on the inbound. And Corey Smith, seven points, 20 to 16. Sewell, a handoff to Devarian Clark. Clark down, passes down right, blocked to Maceo Hicks, who's checked back in. Left handed layup is no good. Rangelio Serra checking his mouth. I don't know if he got elbowed or something. A little bit of blood in his mouth. Turnover on East, and it's back to the Bobcats in a four-point game. Jacob Thiessen checks out. Kyle Smith is back in as he's playing with two fouls this afternoon. Treshawn Brooks will slowly bring it up court. Now angles to the near side. Now back to the right wing, now to Giannetto, drops it in. Corey Smith back to Giannetto. Giannetto drives, and a short jumper is good for Giannetto. Four in the game. Back to a two-point game under four minutes on Weir McGraw Court at Waterloo East High School. Conference of Champions matchup this afternoon in the Iowa Lions. Three, left wing buried by Devarian Clark. He has five in the game. Hey, Coach Mike Apple, very vocal this afternoon. Trying to inspire his team. Need the bucket right here. Treshawn Brooks just outside the left high post. That's a great pull up for two. 
Four in the game for the senior. Leaner can't go for Sharkey and a travel after he gets it back. Great luck again at that jump shot by Treshawn Brooks. So good. He's picked up the aggressiveness with his shot. Being encouraged to take a few more shots, play unselfishly. The words from head coach Mike Apple. And around he goes. He got the screen, now a kick out. Giannetto, come on, got to get in there. Finally gets one from the left wing. Been rough going from three-point territory for Carter Giannetto, but that one ties it up at 23. And an answer by Deverian Clark. Eight for number 11. Good ball movement down to Treshawn Brooks, right block. Steps back. Clutch. Six for Brooks now. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe at Waterloo East in the first half. Under two minutes now. Sharkey sets up the offense with 15, goes into the paint. Leaner this time is good. That is a little luck involved with that shot right there. Six for Sharkey from the hip. Free throw line jumper off the front of the iron. Rebound brought in by Muhammad. And in transition, nobody stops Adon Muhammad, and he gets his first bucket of the evening. Back to a five-point lead for the Trojans. Off a screen, three is skimming off the iron for Kyle Smith. Spin move off the glass high, and I think that's going to be, yeah, last touched off of Masio Hicks. Out of bounds on Waterloo East, and back to the Bobcats with 44 seconds to go before halftime. That backcourt pressure being shown. Bobcats break it into the front court. Corey Smith attacks. Gets a little bit too far underneath, has to lean around. Kyle Smith with the rebound, put back, missed it. Corey Smith, though, cleans it up for two. Shot clock off. 20 seconds to go in the second quarter. Bobcats down by three. Clark looking for somebody to get away to. They do. And yeah, Sharkey has it back. Final shot will go to the Trojans. Kick out far side, and a good job by Corey Smith. He got in the face of Muhammad. He had to hesitate on the three, and that locks it in at a three-point lead for the Trojans. Head into halftime, 30-27 to 27 is our score. Bobcats going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Trojans at the break right here on KFJB-TV. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown Steakhouse. Ribeyes and sirloins, aged, hand-cut, and served with your choice of two of Legends legendary sides and a dinner roll. If you are a prime rib fan, Legends has prime rib every Friday and Saturday starting at 4 p.m. With three sides to choose from, it's chef-seasoned and slow-cooked to tender, juicy perfection. Try Legends Prime Rib, and you'll know why it's Marshalltown's favorite. Legends American Grill is Marshalltown Steakhouse. Since 1967, Vincent Ford Lincoln has served generations of families around central Iowa. Quality vehicles, professional service, knowledge of our product, that's a part of Jensen. But what's more important to us is a trust that has passed down from every previous generation. Jensen Ford Lincoln wants to serve your family for generations. We want to be there for your first car. We want to be there for your family SUV. And we want to see you drive away in the Mustang you always dreamed of. 
At Jensen, we want to be here for you now and every mile along the way. There's a city within a city not far from here. This city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. This city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. Don't let concerns about shifts in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started by giving Zach Wall a call at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or visiting edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. KFJV TV presents the Bobcat Halftime Report. Halftime in Waterloo, 30 to 27 is our score at halftime. Waterloo East led by four as we went uh, to the second quarter and they take a three point lead heading into the halftime break. But uh, Bobcats doing a nice job in that first half, kind of hanging in there. Seven points at halftime for Carter Gianetto, Jacob Thiessen with two. Six at the break for Treshawn Brooks. He's really had a couple of really nice shots in that first half. And nine for Corey Smith. That is uh, the four scores, or excuse me, five scores. Yeah, five scores in that first half of action. Rahelio Sarin does not have a bucket in the first half. Keandre Owens with three points in the first half for Waterloo East. Six for Dejan Sharkey. 7 for Deshondas Moore. 8 points for Devarian Clark. Jeremiah Clark has 4 points at the break and a 2 point bucket by Adon Muhammad in that first half. So 30 to 27 is our halftime score as the Bobcats trailing by 3. When we come back, we'll be joined by Brian Murphy, head coach for the girls basketball team. We'll recap their game coming up right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB TV. The votes have been tallied and the people have spoken. Central Iowa's home comfort specialist, Honest Heating and Cooling, is honored to have been voted best of the best in HVAC by you and the Times Republican. As a thanks, Honest is offering a 10% off sale, 10% off diagnostics, 10 off tune-up, 10 off ductwork renovation, 10% off full system upgrades. Offer valid through September. So thanks for voting for Honest Heating and Cooling, where you'll find Amana, America's brand for comfort, Honest. It's Adventure On for Marshalltown Scouting. Adventures like backpacking, zip lining, rock climbing, canoeing, swimming, and more. Survival skills for a scout's greatest adventure, life. Scouts give back to the community. Marshalltown Scouts have provided over 1 million hours of service to our community in our 70-plus year history. Scout leaders are highly trained in screen. Parents are a huge part of scouting, too. Scouting provides unique opportunities available nowhere else. To learn more about scouting in Marshalltown, go to iascouts.org. Adventure On. The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by Jensen Ford, with you every mile along the way. Legends American Grill, Marshalltown Steakhouse. Lennox Employees Credit Union, LennoxECU.com. Marshalltown Area Chamber, Marshalltown, more than ever. Marshalltown Community College, a step in the right direction. Welcome back to Waterloo East High School. Now joined by Brian Murphy, head girls basketball coach. Our postgame channel presented by Laurel Diesel Services, your locally owned qualified diesel mechanics coach. 
40-point loss here today. It, it was one of those games where it just seemed like you, you took the opening lead, but it was Waterloo East the rest of the afternoon. The physicality of the their guards mm -hmm. seemed to really make a, a pretty big impact this afternoon. Yeah, for sure. I think the, the physicality definitely wore us down. I thought one of the, the big turning points in the first half, the uh, first quarter really, was you know we came in trying to be selective about who we closed out on. We knew they were quick. Um, so Latiker was somebody that we were going to give some space to, and she'd only hit five threes all season. Or, and uh, she turned out and hit three uh, in mm -hmm. this game. And sometimes that's when the scouting comes to kind of drain you a little bit, where suddenly we're having to help out a little bit more on her, and then suddenly Stanford gets some space to drive. So, you know, I thought, you know, our, our scout kind of backfired on us a little bit, where, you know, you hit those threes. I hit seven tonight. They're only averaging about three or four. So uh, when, when they're hitting from the outside and also get to the rim, it starts to get challenged of uh, what you can take away. Seemed like a game that really challenged the mental toughness this afternoon because it, the shots weren't going, the turnovers were kind of mounting, and then, you know, Waterloo East, that physica physicality. So, I mean, it, this is the kind of one you probably just kind of got to clear the slate and move on to Grinnell on, on Monday night. Yeah, and, and and what we talked about is, I mean, that, again, it's there are moments where we look like the best team. I really liked our opening three minutes. You know, Sydney yeah. Kakei did a great job of just putting her head down and going. Millie Heitman did it again. And, I mean, that, that's what we need out of a young team is recognizing this is the level of physicality and intensity I've got to bring every play because that's the next level for us where, you know, we just don't quite get over the hump sometimes because we're too hesitant, and suddenly that's when the defense kind of feasts on that insecurity, and that's what we said post game is, you know, Waterloo East is great about sensing that mm -hmm. uh, hesitation. They pounce on it, and they're physical, and they go, they go right at it. So we've got to recognize that in ourselves, that we can't show our, our hesitation when we're out the floor. Nine points, nine rebounds for Ellie Hughes. She was not afraid of that contact and physicality nope. today. She has a, a couple really nice drives to, to get in there and get some free throw attempts. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, it, it shows that I mean she's got the most experience at the varsity level out of anybody on our team. I mean, she's played uh, for several years on the varsity level as a junior, and uh, you hit it on the head. I mean, she was the consistently the most physical player on our team tonight. She's done it all season. Uh, so, I mean, she's, she sets the tone. Now we've got to follow it with some of our younger players. Your next game on Monday night going to be on the road at Grinnell. We'll have that game for you here on KFJB-TV. Real quick, what's your thought getting ready for that one? What do you know you need to do in the next 48 hours? A uh, little bit of a different challenge where they've got one guard, uh, Hen. She's a senior, averages about 16 a game. She's kind of a, a bulkier guard, but very good about getting the paint. So, uh, you know, not quite as quick, but a lot stronger than some of the girls we saw tonight. So if we can shut her down, it forces everybody else on the team to have to, to make up for that. And uh, it seems I like our matchup with, but just like tonight, we've got to execute uh, everything we know we need to do. Yeah, for sure. All right, we'll talk to you Monday night. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Brian Murphy with us with our postgame chat with him, all brought to you by Laurel Diesel Services. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFJB-TV. When Mike Overton moved to Laurel, Iowa, he had a vision to have a diesel repair shop that would support his growing family and passion for working on diesel engines. Being part of the East Marshall community means ensuring that farmers, truck drivers, and businesses run smoothly. With a large building and state-of-the-art equipment, Laurel Diesel Services is always up for a challenge. When your farm trucks, semis, or other diesel equipment requires maintenance or the occasional repair, take it to Laurel Diesel Services. You look forward to retirement as your time to relax. But now that it's here, turns out relaxation is overrated and you'd rather get back to work with an idea of your own. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement plans change course, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. We are ready to go for the second half inside Waterloo East High School. Bobcats open up with the basketball to begin the third quarter. On Weir McGraw court on Brandon Lewis. Pull up right side is no good by Corey Smith. And in transition, just a tough play. As Moore takes it all the way in and adds to his point figure. He has nine points in the game. Smith setting the screen. Now gets it back to Corey Smith. And his jumper inside, no good. So Corey Smith missing on a couple of quick shots here to begin the second half. Now 
Muhammad high points the basketball, now kicks it back out to Sharkey, top of the key. Now Moore has his pocket picked, but it goes right back to Sharkey. And he'll attack, and a block shot by Kyle Smith, out of bounds. Still Trojan basketball, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Round high to Moore. Hesitation drives against Giannetto. Leans, misses the layup, but a cleanup. Masillo Hicks rebound, and the two-point bucket is first of the afternoon. And a charge, an illegal screen is going to be set here. Kyle Smith will pick up the foul. And that'll be back to Waterloo East. So Kyle Smith will have to check out his third foul of the game. And Jacob Thiessen is in. Ninety seconds gone in the third quarter. It's been all Waterloo East. Moore stops at the left high post and kicks out right wing to Clark. Clark, now to Sharkey. Sharkey dribbles off his foot. Retains, gives to Muhammad, hangs in the air and pulls up right block. It's good for Adan Muhammad. Two points. He has four overall now in the game. Helio Saren right. Wing over to Corey Smith and now to Treshawn Brooks. Decent faked and kicked to the top of the key. Giannetto, long range three off the back of the iron. Corey Smith put a hand up a little too late to flex, and it's over into the Bobcat bench. And it's back to Waterloo East as the Bobcats trailing by nine points. Just like that, it was a three-point game at the midway break. Moore's three on the right wing is no good. It's off the left side of the iron. Bobcats get the, getting the rebound. Treshawn over the timeline into the front court. Spin move. Giannetto kicks out. Now gets a feedback from Jacob Thiessen. Rahelio Saren drives in, kicks to Corey Smith, but the pass off the mark. Turnover, Bobcats. Bobcats. Girls and boys today, ton of turnovers that have cost them, and right now, Bobcats in a make-or-break situation where they've got to lock in for things to get out of hand on the road. And there's a good play by Corey Smith, but he gets too much body contact. He's going to pick up a foul. And the shooting foul will send Jeremiah Clark to the free throw line for two. Second foul of the afternoon for Corey Smith. And the free throw by Jeremiah Clark is no good. That block shot right there. Clark and Moore having a conversation before the free throw, and now the free throw's up, and this one is good for Jeremiah Clark. Now it's five points in the game, and it's a 10-point lead for the Trojans. Pressure being put on here. Bobcats break it into the front court. Treshawn Brooks... Got the basketball, and now he'll have it back from Giannetto. Corey Smith almost trapped after he dribbles it off of his foot. Ball poked away from Thiessen. Just outside the left flank. It'll stay with the Bobcats with five on the shot clock. Timeout on the floor. 
Bobcats want to drop a good inbound play right here. We'll take a timeout with them. This is Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to marshalltown.org. This is Jacob Thiessen. You're watching Bobcat Basketball on KFJB TV. Bobcats taking a timeout. They're down by 10. Five seconds on the shot clock. And the Bobcats will have to operate quickly. That is assistant... Coach Brynjir Brynjinson's specialty, drawing up those inbound plays. Treshawn Brooks will be the man to inbound. Kyle Smith opens up off the inbound, but a man is there. I think Moore might have been the man to tip it. He gets back in transition, tries to slam it down. Misses that one. Kyle Smith with the rebound for the Bobcats. And the Bobcats going to get it back into the front court here quickly. A lot of fanfare for a whole lot of nothing right there. Corey Smith kicks out. Rally O'Sara in three. Far side quarter, no good. Bobcats scrambling for the rebound. Can't get it. But Kyle Smith picks the pocket. Of Jeremiah Clark gets it to Treshawn. The leader inside underneath the hoop is no good. Rebound brought in by Jeremiah Clark. And a forced turnover, but Muhammad fouls from behind. So Muhammad with the foul. Giannetta will inbound. That's the first on Muhammad. It was kind of a breakaway situation. I wasn't sure if that was going to be a flagrant foul or not, but it was not. Treshawn Brooks with the pass from the inbound man, and Giannetto gets it back to Giannetto. Kyle Smith to Rahelio Sarin. Spin move, and the jump shot is no good for Treshawn. Moore rebound. He'll push it up court himself. Flips it underhand, but two guys run into each other nearly, and Quinton Hart. And now a floater inside by Jeremiah Clark. That shot is no good. And they say a jump ball. Possession arrow, Waterloo East. Moore opens up, but this defense clapped inside, and that is a dagger right there by Deshondis Moore. Thirteen-point lead in Waterloo. Bobcats trailing on the road. Free throw line jumper off the front of the iron. Brooks can't hit in transition. They try to go for the oop, and Owens can't convert, but a rebound. Put back no good inside. And the Cats come away with the basketball. And Kyle Smith will stop the bleeding. Big three, just his second of the game. Smith with six. Moore kind of backs it out. It'll set up the offense. Corey Smith guarding. Owens to Moore. Moore pulls up. And he was feeling it. But misses that one as Treshawn climbs the ladder for the rebound. Trojans all over him. Kicks out. Kyle Smith leaned a little too much into that shot maybe. 
are just off the mark. And now Moore loses it as a pass went into him in the paint. Pass behind him, and now the Cats will slow it down. Ten-point game. Kevin go, and a hold's going to be called on the Trojans. Foul will be on Quinden Hart. Bobcats will have it along the baseline. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. It's been all Trojans. Catch and shoot off the inbound. It's going to be strong. Rebound backside brought in by Landon Sewell. And he's dribbling it off their shoe and back to the Bobcats. Corey Smith almost held that on his hip, but luckily not called right there. Trayshawn gets the feed, three from straight on, off the mark, and now Trojans smelling blood in the water. They're trying to go quickly as their head coach, Mike Saylor, just shaking his head no. Is that one over the head of Keandre Owens? I thought he was going to take a big fall, luckily to save himself. Bob can't struggle on the inbounds. Now they hand off to Trayshawn. He's over the timeline. Shot clock is off. Foul from behind. It's going to be on Quindon Hart. Back to back fouls on him. He's picked up his second there. Quindon Hart hanging all over. Treshawn Brooks. He'll spin away, drives in, misses the layup, comes up short. Waterloo East will push in transition. Sewell drives baseline, floater good. Sewell with his first bucket of the game. Giannetto a long three at the buzzer off the front of the iron. And it's a 12-point game going to the fourth quarter on KFJB-TV. As you walk inside, you know right away the place for fun is Wayward Social. There's always plenty of bowling action, so plan for your next outing to include bowling at Wayward Social. Also, meet your friends for lunch, dinner, or your favorite beverages. You will also absolutely love their daily lunch specials, Monday through Friday, including endless pizza by the slice. You choose the toppings. Wayward Social is now open at 11.30 a.m., seven days a week. Wayward Social on South 6th Street in Marshalltown. Small businesses are the backbone of our community. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce reminds you that when you shop locally, you are benefiting members of our community and adding to our local community overall. You'll find local business owners are generally more knowledgeable, provide better service, and even know their customers by name. Marshalltown Area Chamber of Commerce exists to be an advocate for our business community. Membership in the chamber benefits your business and adds to the strength of our advocacy efforts. For more information on shopping locally and chamber membership, go to Marshalltown. Bobcats outscored 12-3 in that third quarter. It was only a Kyle Smith made three-point bucket. As he has six points in the game, and the Bobcats down big as we head to the fourth quarter and now turn it over. Owens, and he will slam it down and extends it to a 14-point lead for the Trojans. Five for Owens. Smith can't answer. And Corey Smith hauls in the rebound, and a tie-up and a reaching foul is going to be called on Landon Sewell. Rally O'Searin can't get the rebound. Quickly in transition, lost out of bounds. I think that was Giannetto who might have got in there and tipped that one away. So Trojan basketball with 7.23 to go in the fourth quarter. And officials with a quick question. They're going to reset the shot clock here.
So five seconds taken off on the shot clock there. That was the question. Inbound to Owens. Owens, jumper. Can't get it to fall. Bobcats can't get the rebound initially, but Giannetto does eventually come away with it. Rayshon backs it out there. Now Corey Smith, left block, turnaround jumper, no go. He had nine in the first half, and Corey Smith can't find a bucket. He had two quick buckets to attempts in the third quarter to begin, but he couldn't find it, and it's been all Waterloo East since. Devarian Clark for two. He has ten. Timeout, Mike Apple. The equity in your home is power. Power to remodel your home. Take a memorable vacation at a deck or patio. Lennox Employees Credit Union can help you unleash the financial power you possess with a home equity loan. Consolidate debt, fund a student loan, or pay for a wedding. The loan process is easy. See Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA, Equal Housing Lender. Online at LennoxECU.com. At Sports Plus Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, we customize each patient's treatment plan to their individual needs. What does that mean? It means that not every back or knee problem is treated the same and that your program will be unique and designed especially for your needs or problem. This improves how quickly you will return to work or sports. The Sports Plus staff is encouraging and takes pride in your successful recovery. This is just one more reason why champions choose Sports Plus Physical Therapy as their favorite place to rehabilitate and train. Welcome back to Waterloo East High School. 6.48 to go in this basketball game. It's a 16-point lead right now for the Trojans. As they continue to pour it on, the Bobcats just struggling to make shots this afternoon. And East has been physical this afternoon. Bobcats have been physical as well, but they just have not been able to capitalize. Almost a hold right there by Owens, but Smith fights through it, and Corey Smith with 11 now, his first bucket of the second half. Sharkey, a drive, misses. Sewell from behind the rebound and put back, and he hits the deck. It's good for Sewell. He has four now. Saren wide open, drives baseline, kicks to Trayshawn. Trayshawn over to Smith. Now Giannetto in the paint, kicks to Rahelio Saren. And he can't convert. Owens with the rebound, and a foul is going to be called. Foul on Rahelio Saren. Forty-eight to thirty-two, the score. Five forty-nine up on the Marshalltown High B scoreboard. Sharkey will get the inbound. Hand off to Jeremiah Clark. Top of the key feeds over to the right wing. Moore has checked back in. Landon Sewell out across the free throw line. Feeds to Moore. His three is no good. Kyle Smith with the rebound. Rahelio Sarin a little hesitant to shoot that three today, I've noticed. Feeds to Giannetto, and Giannetto drives, though, and... Two-point bucket, he has nine now. But more in transition. And that's the difference. Waterloo East is pushing the issue each and every possession. The tang at the rack, and the Bobcats not quite the same intensity. And Moore makes him pay with a free throw on the way for the end one. Free throw is good. He is two of four at the stripe this afternoon. Bobcats try to break the press, but Sewell's in the in the path. Sharkey feeds to Sewell, and they will say that is off of Landon Sewell. 
Bomb Camp basketball. Giannetto left wing over to Corey Smith. He'll drive baseline, pulls up, fakes a shot, and good move right there, 51-36. Bobcat still trailing on the road. Sewell down to left block. Bobcats can't deny him. Landon Sewell with six points. He averages that. All have come here in the second half. Giannetto sees there's a lack of defenders in the paint. One steps in late. I think that was Landon Sewell, and he'll foul. And this will send Giannetto to the line for two free throws with 4.10 to go. Giannetto on the season, 67% from the stripe. The first one is good. His first trip to the line this afternoon. Sharkey checking out. Quinton Hart is in for Waterloo East. Giannetto connects on both free throws at a timeout. 53-38, Cats trailing on the road, Waterloo East. You should never have to wait after ordering new appliances. At Penn's Appliance, you wouldn't. With an incredible selection in stock and ready to install today. Our friendly team is here to help you pick the perfect set to match your style. And let our professional technicians install and set up your new appliances. Often delivering the very next day. Stop in today, see all the new features, and find your new look at Penn's Appliance. For sales and service of everything appliance, go see the Pence team. You'll find the perfect mattress for you at McGregor Furniture and Mattress. You choose the firmness, comfort, and support level all at a great price. McGregor's always has a great selection of sofas, recliners, dining room, and bedroom furniture to help you live and relax in comfort and style. Their staff will help you find just what you're looking for. McGregor's Furniture and Mattress Downtown Marshalltown is open seven days a week. They're proud to support Bobcat Athletics. Out of the timeout, Waterloo East with the basketball as a reaching foul is going to be called on the Bobcats. Treshawn Brooks will pick up the foul as head coach Mike Apple wanted a timeout after Carter Gianetto made two made free throws. 53-38 the score. Bobcats will drop back down to 500 with a loss here this afternoon. This will be their second conference loss in the Iowa Alliance. Meanwhile, Waterloo East Trojans will go to 5-2 and two and be above the Bobcats in the Iowa Alliance North standing since they'll go to 6-5 on their overall record. Still time to kind of work back, but Bobcats have to make some shots, and that will help them out right there as they're back with the basketball. And Sewell... Had that pass sail to the right of, or the left of him in the far side corner. So turnover on the Trojans, back to the Bobcats as Treshawn Brooks points the basketball over to Kyle Smith. Three right wing off the back of the iron. Rally Osera and try to get the rebound. He does kind of tip it to Treshawn Brooks. Corey Smith, turnaround jumper, comes up short. He'll get the basketball, but then loses it as it was poked, they say, off of... He hands him more. Quick catch and shoot off the inbound play, but Kyle Smith not feeling it today. He has six points, only two made threes. Moore rejected by Corey Smith. And a line change for Waterloo East. Cam Roberts, Levante Bell, among others, checking in. As we see that blocked by Corey Smith. Darian Bates gets the inbound play. 
As he just checked in, a drive to the rack, no good. Bates knocks the rebound out, but Bobcats. Corey Smith comes away with the basketball. He'll speed ahead, flips it, Giordano three. Far side corner, that off the back of the iron. Saren with the rebound for the Bobcats, and now he gets tied up at the free throw line, and I believe Bates is going to be called with a foul, and he is. He's shaking his head like he does not agree, but... Inbound quickly to Kyle Smith for two. Eight for Kyle Smith this afternoon. A little more defensive pressure being put on by the Bobcats, but Trojans get it into the front court. Free throw line jumper. Devarian Clark knocks it home. He has 12 this afternoon. And there's two minutes to go. And in a 15-point game, Bobcats turned it over, but turn it right back over to the Trojans. Three for Giannetto, and he can't connect. Bates push Kyle Smith from behind to get the rebound, but no call right there. And we're under two. Ball almost thrown away by Cam Roberts. Trojans, though, save it. And uncontested three for Sharkey. That one will be out of bounds. Bobcat basketball. Ninety seconds to go. We're McGraw Court, Waterloo East High School. Brandon Lewis with you this afternoon on KFJB TV. Giannetto, left high post pulls up. That one will not fall, and that's been the kind of afternoon it's been for the Bobcats, who've been short with the bench the past couple of games. And we'll see a whole line of guys getting ready to come in. And a timeout going to be called. We'll take it with them. 55 40, 106 to go at Waterloo East. Picture yourself at Marshalltown Community College. <laughs> Become a Tiger for Life. Visit ncc.iavalley.edu. Locations in both Marshalltown and Grinnell. Welcome back to Waterloo East. Bobcats are trailing by 15 points late in the fourth quarter as out of that uh, substitution change. Ryan Schmidt had the basketball, went up strong, missed the shot, but he was fouled, and it's two free throws for Ryan Schmidt as a senior. 50% on the season at the stripe coming into this one. Makes the first free throw, and that's his first point of the game. And the second free throw hits off the iron. That is good as well. 13-point affair. Cam Roberts running right the point. The senior guard has checked in late. Sharkey now driving against Scatliel Jor. Jor knocked it out of there, almost got it back for the Bobcats. Jacob Thiessen blocks the shot. Bobcats can't get it back. And a three is going to be an air ball. And I think we're going to have a away from the ball foul on Waterloo East. And it's going to be on Sharkey. That's his fifth foul, and they're going to award free throws for the Bobcats. Ryan Schmidt will shoot. Schmidt's third free throw of the day rattles out. His fourth won't go either, but a rebound by Lamar Johnson, and the putback by Johnson, no good. The 
And that'll do it this afternoon. 55-42, the final score. Waterloo East throughout. Bobcats were only down by three at halftime, but struggled to put a bucket in. And in the second half, they only made one shot in the third quarter. It was a three by Kyle Smith. And the Bobcats, with the loss here this afternoon, fall to 6-6. Six and six. Trojans move up to 6-5 and five on the season. The Locker Room Report is next, right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB-TV. Some drivers trade cars every year or every other year. Some drive their cars till they drop. Whatever kind of driver you are, Lennox Employees Credit Union is here to get you into the car for your style of driving. You're invited to go to our website, LennoxECU.com, for membership eligibility and loan rates, or call the office to talk to a loan officer. The loan process is quick and easy. Low auto loan rates from Lennox Employees Credit Union, 1004 East Main Street in Marshalltown. Member NCUA. How can you help Marshalltown High School and enjoy a mouth-watering burger at the same time? By ordering the Bobcat Burger at Legends American Grill. Two quarter-pound patties with crisp bacon strips, sautéed onions and melted American cheddar, jack and Swiss cheeses on top of fresh shredded lettuce on a toasted bun. It's absolutely delicious. One dollar from every Bobcat Burger sold is donated by Legends to Marshalltown High School activities. So, enjoy a Bobcat Burger and help MHS. The Bobcat Burger, another exclusive from Legends American and grill in Marshalltown. The right insurance agent can make all the difference. Assured Partners agents represent multiple insurance companies. They can pick and choose from a larger variety of outstanding insurance options. Assured Partners also handles life and health insurance and Medicare supplement coverage. With access to local, regional, and national insurance companies, Assured Partners will create policies tailored to the coverage you need. For more information, go online to assuredpartners.com slash Marshalltown. Power through partnership with Assured Partners in Marshalltown, Toledo, and West Des Moines. At Honest Heating and Cooling, they take comfort seriously. Their latest offering? Smart Integrity Monitoring. Combined with an honest maintenance plan, it takes all the guessing out of home comfort. Their technicians take accurate measurements of all the necessary parameters and deliver you the truth about where your home's comfort stands. If you're not measuring, you're just guessing. That's honest. Get a smart integrity monitoring plan and let the honest team watch over your home's comfort 24-7. Honest Heating and Cooling. The KFJB TV Locker Room Report. Presented by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. Well, the Bobcats swept in a Conference of Champions matchup this afternoon at Waterloo East High School as Waterloo East Trojans take the girls' game 73-33, and they also take a final in the boys' game 55-42 here this afternoon. Bobcats weren't even really in it in the second half as the Trojans just kind of ran away with it as uh, Deshaunis Moore, uh, Deshaunis Moore Really had an exceptional afternoon. The guard, just a, uh, a pretty strong player, as well as Devarian Clark. He came off the bench for 12 points here this evening for the Waterloo East Trojans. Let's take a look at our final stat line tonight. Carter Gianetto, 11 points for the Bobcats. JT's and two, six for Treshawn Brooks. Kyle Smith had eight points here tonight. As Corey Smith finishes with 13 and two points for Ryan Schmidt. He came in and knocked down a few free throws late in this one. 15 points for Deshondis Moore. 13 or 12, like I mentioned, Devarian Clark. Two for Maceo Hicks. He got the start, but uh, definitely didn't contribute like others off the bench. Landon Sewell had six points. Those all came in the second half. Five here this afternoon for Jeremiah Clark. Six for Adan Muhammad. And Keandre Owens finishes with five this afternoon. And six for Dejan Sharkey for the Waterloo East Trojans. Trojans are now six and five overall, five and two in conference play. As uh, you know, really, their only uh, bad loss to Ames uh, in conference play. Ames definitely one of the top teams in conference play. Loss drops the Bobcats overall record back to 500 at six and six. They are four and two in the Iowa Lions Conference North standings. The Locker Room Report continues next right here on KFJB-TV.
You look forward to retirement as your time to relax. But now that it's here, turns out relaxation is overrated and you'd rather get back to work with an idea of your own. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When retirement plans change course, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. There's a city within a city not far from here. The city includes a beautiful apartment building with indoor parking, a chapel, a movie theater, a swimming pool, exercise and recreational facilities, putting greens, and more. The city isn't really a city, but it is a wonderful place to live. Make friends and live your best life. It's the Embers Retirement Community in Marshalltown. The Embers provides security, independence, and companionship. Beautiful grounds outside and lovely studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments inside. See it for yourself. The Embers in Marshalltown. With over 10,000 cars at our disposal, Jensen Ford... Hold on. That's not really how we do things at Jensen Ford. How about... It's never been a better time to buy a brand new... Um, yeah, we don't really do that either. When you're ready to buy a car, we'll be ready to help. Try this. We'll get you in and out faster than a speeding... We don't do that either. At Jensen Ford, we'll take as much time as you need to find the right vehicle. We're not just moving cars, but we're building relationships. Oh, maybe more of a... This is where your family buys their vehicles. There you go. More like that. Today's game on KFJB-TV is brought to you by McGregor's Furniture and Mattress. Quality furniture for every room in your home. Pence Appliance and TV. For sales and service of everything appliance, come see the Pence team. Wayward Social. The place for bowling, games, food, and more. Wells Fargo Advisors. Marshalltown. Sports Plus. Sports Medicine and Physical Therapy Center, sportsplustherapy.com. Regional scoreboard update brought to you by Central State Bank. Discover what Central State Bank can do for you. Locations in Ames, State Center, and in West Des Moines. A few finals around boys basketball this afternoon. Central DeWitt takes down Iowa City High, 57-54. Clear Creek, Amana over Indianola, 68 Big final here, Ankeny Centennial tops Waterloo West, who just took on your Bobcats last night. Ankeny Centennial, uh, the Jaguars, as to call them, 87-25. They top Waterloo West in a blowout there. And, of course, earlier this, uh, this evening, 73-33 was the final in girls basketball as Waterloo East took down Marshalltown and in the boys' game, 55-42 the final score. We'll try to catch up with head coach Mike Apple when we come back. This is the Locker Room Report. You're watching KFJB TV. You planned and saved for your child to go to college, but medical school after graduation was a surprise. A happy, expensive surprise. Wells Fargo Advisors can help. For more than 125 years, we've created wealth management and investment strategies aimed at achieving our clients' personal financial goals. When opportunities surprise you, turn to Wells Fargo Advisors. Together, we'll go far. Wells Fargo Advisors is located at 14 East South Ridge Road in Marshalltown. Call them at 641-752-5401. They're a member SIPC. Scouts in Marshalltown go on fun adventures. Scouts learn about the outdoors. Scouts learn character building. Scouts learn citizenship. Scouts learn life skills. Scouts learn to be leaders. Scouts go to fun summer camps, and scouts get a head start in life. Marshalltown has produced over 200 Eagle Scouts in our over 70-year history and have provided over 1 million hours of service to our community. To learn more about joining scouting in Marshalltown, go to iascouts.org. Adventure on! The KFJB TV Locker Room Report, presented by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. Back at Waterloo East High School, Brandon Lewis with you as a final here tonight, 55 42, as the Bobcat Boys basketball team defeated. Girls were defeated earlier tonight, 40, or 73 to 33. That is our next game coming up on Monday night. As the girls' basketball team will be on the road at Grinnell. We'll have coverage for you starting at 7 o'clock. And 7.30 is our tip time on Monday night here on KFJB TV. Be sure to hit uh, the like and subscribe button, youtube.com slash at KFJB TV. That is our next game coming up 
here on our broadcast. We'll take another quick, quick time out, and when we come back, we'll be joined by head coach Mike Apple. This is the Locker Room Report. You're watching KFJB-TV. <laughs> He's back, looks to pass, he's got him in the flat, that's Tate Ray makes the catch, he's up to midfield, he breaks away at the 40, 30, 20, 10, touchdown, Tate Ring, his second one of the night. Welcome in to Bobcat Live, we are inside Rosie's at Wayward Social. Welcome back inside the locker room report. Brianna Lewis with you as uh, Coach Apple just about ready to join us in our postgame coverage here tonight. Bobcat boys will be back at action coming up on Tuesday night at Roosevelt. And that will definitely be a tough road contest for the Bobcats in that one. Now joined by head coach Mike Apple in the locker room report. Our post-game chat is now brought to you by Laurel Diesel Services, your locally owned qualified diesel mechanics. Well, coach, uh, you know, looking at, at this one in the final line, kind of really a tale of, of two halves here tonight. Yeah, you know, I, we, just, we just got our execution wasn't great tonight, and obviously we weren't making open shots, so that had a lot to do with it. But um, you know, they got they set us up a little bit at times, and they were able to capitalize on that and get easy baskets, and they're really pushing it in transition. We had a hard time stopping. You know, Deshaun is more. He's averaging eight points a game. He had 15 tonight. He he was one of those guys. I thought, especially in the third quarter, he was really going in there and attacking and, and that was really I think in third quarter I mentioned it you guys only scored one bucket in that third quarter but that was the reason they just were attacking and attacking it that kind of gets that gets tough to, to be in that kind of game right because that kind of changes your style maybe a little bit yeah we just we just did a poor job of keeping guys in front of us tonight you know and, and, and maybe it's tired legs from playing last night or whatever it is but uh they're athletic team and mm -hmm. you know they got the ability to do that and we got to make sure we do a little better job next time we play them, keeping in front of us and keeping off the glass. I mean, they just um, kind of willed their way with us physicality-wise and being able to be more athletic. Um, that had a huge impact in the game tonight, and that, you know that was made it tough for us to score the ball too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you you had a tight game in the first half, kind of going toe to toe with them, and Trayshawn Brooks was really the key behind that. Uh, what do you think it was the difference? Because he had six points in the first half. He had no points in the second half. But he had some really nice drives and was able to, to you know, kind of create some things in space. Yeah. I, I, you know, when, it, when it's a, it just gets a little chaotic, I would say, sometimes. And our guys just got to understand what we want to do and who we want to have the ball in the hands of and mm -hmm. make plays. And kind of went away from that a little bit of understanding that and, Took some quick shots at times uh, where we didn't hit them, and then they're coming they're coming down the other way and scoring. So just a little more understanding, you know, who we want to have it and, and making the play, and, and Trey's obviously a huge part of that, and we, we kind of mm -hmm. went away from that a lot that third quarter. Uh, and, then it, and then it just kind of spiraled out of control. Surprised me a little bit about how, uh, you know, Water Luis, they, they always have kind of their identity, you know. I mean, uh, the way they want to get out and run, they want to do it. But I was, I was surprised because we've seen a few different faces this year, but they are still kind of executing that plan of attack. And especially, you know, they got Mike Saylor in his first year. But he, I know I think he's been around the program for a while. So this is a team that is definitely going to challenge. I, I know they were tested earlier this year by Ames quite a bit. So No, yeah, they're, they're a good team. I mean, we knew that going in, and we knew we had to be ready to play and, and, and guard the drive more, you know, and um, – you know, it was just tough for us to get stops tonight, and, and it was tough for us to score the ball. You know, we shot 16% uh, from three, four for 25. Yeah. Uh, that's not that's not going to usually win too many games. Yeah. So, um, you know, the message was this is a bump in the road. We have a lot of good things going. Let's mm -hmm. not let this derail us by any means. Let's just learn from it and 
continue to improve and continue working hard. You're going to rematch against Roosevelt on Tuesday night. I know things didn't go the way that you wanted it to in the first matchup, but you were without Treshawn Brooks. Now you got him back. Yep. It, it gets full health. But, you know, another physical style team that you're going to get ready for, right? Yeah, they are. You know, uh, from that standpoint, a lot like, you know, uh, Waterloo East where they where they got some big bodies out there. So we need to be ready to, ready to guard and, and, and uh, you know, not let them hurt us inside and, and, and block out. We have to do a much better job of that than we did tonight. That just that just really had a huge impact in the game, especially in that first half. I thought, you know, the second half we did a little bit better job maybe, but mm -hmm. um, when they're getting second, you know, two, three, four chances at it, that's just really hard. Yeah. Thanks for the time. We'll talk to you Tuesday, Coach. Yeah, thank you. All right. That is head coach Mike Apple, our postgame chat, all brought to you by Laurel Diesel Services. This is Bobcat Basketball. You're watching KFJB TV. When Mike Overton moved to Laurel, Iowa, he had a vision to have a diesel repair shop that would support his growing family and passion for working on diesel engines. Being part of the East Marshall community means ensuring that farmers, truck drivers, and businesses run smoothly. With a large building and state-of-the-art equipment, Laurel Diesel Services is always up for a challenge. When your farm trucks, semis, or other diesel equipment requires maintenance or the occasional repair, take it to Laurel Diesel Services. Don't let concerns about shifts in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Zach Wall can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started by giving Zach Wall a call at 641-752-3017 in Marshalltown or visiting edwardjones.com. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Welcome in to Bobcat Live. We are inside Rosie's at Wayward Zone. KFJB TV Locker Room Report, presented by Wells Fargo Advisors in Marshalltown. One final time at Waterloo East High School, a final in the boys' game, 55 42. Girls fell earlier tonight, 73 33. So thanks so much to our KFJB TV crew, our producer on site, Zach Tomish, Keith Stewart, Joe Cornwell in, uh, in camera work tonight, and also stats wise, the Deganator. Yeah, thanks to Degan. For helping me out tonight, I'm Brandon Lewis. Have a great rest of your Saturday night. We'll see you Monday nights on the road at Grinnell for girls basketball right here on KFJB-TV. You've been watching Bobcat Athletics right here on your home for the Cats, KFJB-TV. Today's game on KFJB-TV was brought to you by Assured Partners, Boy Scouts of America, Edward Jones, Agent Zach Wall, Ember's Retirement Community, Honest Heating and Cooling, Jensen Ford, Legends American Grill, Lennox Employees Credit Union, Marshalltown Area Chamber, Marshalltown Community College, McGregor's Furniture and Mattress, Pence Appliance and TV, Wayward Social, Zeno's, Wandering Creek, Wells Fargo Advisors, Laurel Diesel Services, Calvin Rocket, your Marshalltown High V, Central State Bank. Wow.